Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Federal Austrian police two hours ago visited the hotel lodge where InfoWars reporters Rob New and Josh Owens were staying. They were in another town interviewing locals about their view of the secretive uh, criminal organization. Many of their members have been indicted uh, meeting in their area of the Austrian Alps. The hotel owner called and said the police are upset about your YouTube videos uh, and they want to talk to you and want to see your papers. You cannot make this up. We have amazing video coming up and, and audio that we're going to air here for the TV slash radio audience of another checkpoint and the federal police saying, what are you doing filming us? It's not very polite as they're sitting there filming them, obviously, at a checkpoint. Big mobile checkpoints set up on the side of the road with big open back trucks, I guess, to load people into. And he goes on to say, the, the, the quote, police officer, I do this for the taxpayers. The taxpayers' money pays me to do this. There is a private party. I will protect it from threats. And obviously, they don't like that video. Unprecedented. So now the feds are looking, and boy, you talk about bugging their eyes out hatefully. The video's up on Infowars.com. Bilderberg police defend tyrannical checkpoints. Reporter confronts Austrian police at security checkpoint. And Dude gets out and goes over and starts talking to him. Guaranteed, and I know they're watching live as well, guaranteed they're going to try to claim that Do was secretly recording him or something when he clearly is there in a public place, no perception of privacy. I've checked Austrian laws. They're the same as ours under common law. But they always project that you're a criminal because they're protecting known real criminals. Let me explain something to the Austrian police watching right now. This is what your masters don't want. London Guardian, the front of the London Guardian, Forget the G7 summit. Bilderberg is where the big guns go. Do you see this? Do you hear this, Austrian feds? Forget the G7. Bilderberg is where the big guns go. And we're there like normal people reporting on the group that brags they created the euro, the TPP, and all of it. We're there like normal people that don't want to be conquered by a bunch of people that resemble Spectre from an Ian Fleming novel. We're normal. You can try to invert reality with myself who has no criminal record, my reporters who have no criminal record, and who have an upstanding history of breaking real, hardcore global news. So go ahead and push it and show everybody what tyrants you are, and it's going to blow up politically in your face. And we know, you know, you've got plenty of arrogance over there, and that's fine. But we're here defending ourselves and our sovereignty, and you should be wanting to defend your country's sovereignty from this usurpation. Because you've been conquered before by the Nazis. I don't believe the globalist conspiracy is a Nazi conspiracy. But the European Union, on record, was a project of Adolf Alois Hitler of Austria. That is a Nazi project, 1937, promoted the year before that at the Olympic Games, on record. And a Nazi helped establish it when it was set up, Prince Bernhard and others. So your country is being conquered again by the very same people that conquered your nation in 1939, 1940. And you're here acting like goons trying to frustrate free speech. But the globalists have already failed. London Guardian, forget the G7 summit. Bilderberg is where the big guns go. Big business set to lobby politicians for the future of EU at Bilderberg Group meeting. London Independent. It's all over French, German, Dutch news. It's not in U.S. news except for Infowars.com. And DrudgeReport.com is linking to that and breaking the blockade. We'll be back doing our job being journalists. It is Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen. The ninth day of June. 
2015. I'm your host, Alex Jones. If you go to Infowars.com, there's an article by Kurt Nemo titled, Bilderberg Orders Cops to Harass Journalists, Voice Your Opposition. And Paul Watson in the UK, about to travel to Austria, is writing an update on this. The federal police came to the Lodge Hotel that Infowars.com reporters Josh Owens and Rob Dew were staying at. They were down the mountain at Telf and were upset, the hotel owner said, and were looking for them because of their, quote, YouTube videos and wanted to see their passport and other, quote, papers. Papers, please, but they don't say please. Already at a checkpoint yesterday, they pull up and the police are bugging their eyes out murderously. Like Rob Dew and Josh Owens had just been caught with dead babies in the back of the car. All part of the pure intimidation of you don't come here, you don't cover the 150 flaming bad guys. Even mainstream news is now likening it to a Mafia 2.0 is now likening it to a specter meeting. Guys covering their faces, black helicopters landing, private jets coming in, armored limousines, and six and a half miles away. I was corrected by Rob Dew last night. Six and a half miles away, they have the first checkpoints on the roads, just roads going out of the town, roads going other directions, major roads you pull up, we have video of this we're about to play. If you're a radio listener, go to Infowars.com. You can see it. And PrisonPlanet.com. And you pull up, and there's federal police with big trucks blocking the road with checkpoints set up, searching your vehicles. If you have a private party and someone threatens it, we're going to protect it. No, you're not. The And, and I mean... These cops' eyes are shaking and bugging out of their heads crazily. And to Dew's credit, after the guy really smarts off and runs off, Dew gets out and goes over and starts talking to him. Because it's hard to have some guy bow up to you for no reason and not want to put them in their place. Here's the deal. We can't get a hold of our reporters right now. Um, I talked to them 30 minutes ago. They were going to do a live feed. And... I'm told we now have them on the phone. We're going to ascertain what's happening there. Yes, yes, we'll go phone if we can't do Skype. But the globalists are losing right now. TPP is unraveling. It's in deep trouble. Sure, they'll try to pass it again. We'll fight it again. These are tectonic forces of good and evil throughout history, folks. People think, we beat it nine times, but they're back again. Oh, oh they're going to win. No, we have to want it more than they do. It's like a four-quarter football game here. And by the way, we're in the fourth quarter tied. The fourth quarter's starting, baby. And for it's all the marbles, everything. Forget the G7 summit. Bilderberg is where the big guns go. London Guardian. London Independent, big business set to lobby politicians on the future of the EU at Bilderberg Group meeting. They go on to basically say it's illegal. All over the Spanish and the Dutch and the Greek and the Italian and the Austrian and the UK, they're reporting on Bilderberg saying it's criminal. Here in the U.S., zero coverage but Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com and other, quote, alternative media that's bigger than most mainstream media set side by side against each outlet. And DrudgeReport.com helping get it out, linking to our stories. That's the only groups covering this because mainline conservatives got up for years and said this didn't exist. Because if you ever admit there's shadowy groups pulling the strings, we'll stop focusing on the puppets and start focusing on the controllers. And then there goes your new world order down the toilet, down the you know water. And as we know, all toilets lead to the White House. Forget the G7 summit. They don't like this. Bilderberg is where the big guns go. You've already failed, federal police, in covering up the criminal meeting, the specter meeting going on in your town.
And, oh, no, we have to have the police blocking all the entrance roads, the sub roads coming into the main road because we can't have the public seeing the black sedans and the diplomatic plated vehicles going to meet in secret. I mean, this is upside down planet. This is upside down world. Here's what I want them to ask the federal police. And if you go to our article on Infowars.com, Kurt Nemo says, voice your opposition. I totally agree with him. We have all the phone numbers up there, especially if you live in Europe, live in Austria, in surrounding areas. You've got to call them and say the world is watching. What are you doing trampling free speech for war criminals like Henry Kissinger? Give us a break. And we've got the state police number, the federal police number, the traffic information center, the federal police number. They're all there with the country codes, everything. Call the public relations offices and say, how dare you? Because now the story is going to be about the secret group of fat cats. The secret group of fat cats meeting and then wanting to keep the peasants back six and a half miles. And then when the peasants dare put up YouTube videos showing the checkpoints, police with their eyes bugging out, basically storm the hotel, guaranteed trying to get our reporters kicked out of it. And then once they've got them kicked out, like we've seen before, then they won't let them up the road within two miles of the hotel. And they've told them, you are not to go on any of the national park trails. They're harassing people that are skiing, people that are hiking. This was going on a week and a half ago. This was in Austrian papers. In the middle of a tourist destination. This is a tourist town, a tourist region. The Alps. You're not welcome when the leader, when the Führers come to town. Gruppenführer is in town. You little scum do not come show it. It's done in secret. Project of Adolf Hitler. Ein Volk, Ein Reich, Ein Führer. Sickening. Well, guess what? You failed miserably in your attempt. And your attempt to smash free speech is only making it explode right now. You watch. What you're doing will now be in scores of newspapers. And will only draw more interest. And what was the only way we'd fail, ladies and gentlemen? The only way we'd fail is by not going and showing their tyranny because they always act like the criminal scum they are. You're not allowed to look Hillary Clinton in the eyes on record at Bilderberg. They treat everyone like total filth and their minions treat the people like filth. This is what they think of you. Unbelievable. Let's go to Rob Dew and Josh Owens reporting from telephone because Skype is down right now. Uh, tell us where you are uh, in the surrounding area and uh, a report on the police and what you're planning. All right. Hey, Alex, this is Rob Dew reporting live from Masan, Austria, just right next door to tell us that the even smaller hamlet, we have a second hotel here just in case uh, we got this actually because it had better Wi-Fi. And then all of a sudden the Wi-Fi seems to be acting screwy. Very interesting. Uh, but today we were down in Telf interviewing people, asking them what they thought about Bilderberg. Uh, most of the older people didn't want to talk to us. Uh, a lot of the younger kids were interested in Bilderberg. A lot of them didn't know what it was. But during all that, I got a call from the hotel manager uh, at the Rompenhof, where we're staying. We have a cabin up there. It's the one that's real close to Bilderberg, uh, to where the Innerhalpen is. And he called, and he wanted to know if uh, we could pay in full on Wednesday. I said, yeah, you know, we have no problem, you know, paying up, whatever. And he goes, well... He goes, also, uh, the police were here looking for you. I said, really? I said, we already talked to the police. We showed them our passports. Why did, you know? He goes, yeah, uh, these might have been, I don't know if they were different or not, but they were asking about YouTube videos. And I'm kind of speaking in his broken dialect. He was, you know, talking in a, a German accent with English. And I said, YouTube videos, okay, that's interesting. I said, we're, you know, is it the same police that are in the parking lot? Because I'll just go up and talk to him when we come back up. He goes, no. They came from a different area. I think these are more like like your FBI or something. So that tells me that it could be the Cobra special operators that are here. There's at least 24 of them that we know of. Um, so this this is getting and by really the way, we're not joking. These are I like think, these are like special forces people 
that reside in a castle and they call themselves Cobra Security. You cannot make this up. Right. And and maybe they saw a report of John Bounds did on Cope and didn't like that. Or maybe they saw the report of showing the uh, checkpoint. And they yeah, well, like if they don't like our free speech, the they can go straight to hell with all the other fascist scum. <laughs> That's how I feel. The guy tried to call me out for videotaping the checkpoint. And I said, listen, you're out here doing something, you know, you're out here supposedly for this event. That doesn't start till Thursday. And he goes, well, we're the police. We, you know, we have to do this. And he, he was trying to justify the, their tyrannical existence, what they were doing. So I, after, after this interview, I plan on going back down into tell. So I'm going to go to the local police and contact them. I'm just going to go into the police station and say, hey, I heard you guys are looking for me, and we'll see where it goes from there. But um, it's very it's very disconcerting that, you you know, putting up a YouTube video is going to get you a visit from the police here in Austria. Well, it shows that Bilderberg has incredible power and is in deep trouble. I want to come back and have you narrate with us for radio listeners the video of the checkpoint. There's audio as well. And this guy was bugging his eyes out at you, Rob. I mean, I would only look at somebody like that if I wanted to attack him. I mean, was he not bugging his eyes out at you? We're going to talk to do when we come back on the other side of this quick break. You may have lost that phone connection. We'll see what's happening. Stay with us. We do have our reporters now uh, connected to Skype video. If you're a radio listener, go to Infowars.com forward slash show to find the free video feed. We're also on Ustream. Of course, the nightly news is subscriber at PrisonPlanet.tv. I am your host, Alex Jones. If you just tuned in, our reporters are covering the globalist meeting, the top globalist meeting that they kept secret for about 40 years. In the last 15 or so, we've blown it wide open. Thanks to Jim Tucker and, of course, the listeners of this broadcast, uh, World Net Daily, Drudge Report, and many others. Now it's all over international press, and the Austrian police are flipping out Federal police uh, are looking for our reporters. They're not hiding. They're just getting it on record what happened before they go looking for them. And the sky's the limit. Uh, there's a tyrannical takeover taking place. In the next segment, I'll play the video of the checkpoint. Now that we have the connection with uh, Dew and others, then I have a special report by John Bound on how TPP is in trouble. And remember, this is the group behind it all. And the 150 members sit on all the other major boards and internationalist groups. But this is the very center of the spider web. This is just a continuation of the G7. Uh, Rob Dew, other points you think are important to make uh, there about six, seven miles away from Bilderberg uh, and other points that Josh Owens thinks we should know. Well, before anything happened this morning, when we were leaving our hotel, we got uh, we were talking to another uh, blogger who's staying there at the hotel, and he said they've actually made the security perimeter, supposedly, smaller. So they said, now we can walk up to the bus depot. And I, I think that might be in part due to some of the videos we put up, because I think somebody probably saw them and made a few phone calls and said, look, you can't treat people like this. So I think that was a pretty important development that happened overnight. Um, I, don't, I haven't looked at the report. I was just told that that uh, in Austrian press, the government issued a an order or a decree, whatever they issued, that said they're shrinking the security perimeter, and it's not as big as it once was. So as we're getting closer to the event, the security perimeter is shrinking, which I think is a good thing, because this is you know taxpayer-funded security at this point. Well, and, plus uh, a, a security perimeter that big won't there. work. Right, exactly. You can, yeah, you cannot have that much security. There's just no way to do it. And with that many people. And uh, today they moved, actually moved the checkpoint from down in Pelt up the mountain probably two miles. So they actually moved the checkpoint up. They started installing porta potties there. So that's going to be the new uh, checkpoint. And uh, in the town of Mosin, it's, it's a very small town. There's two hotels where we saw a bunch of police there. So I think that's where they're staying, which is right next to, well, right up the road from the second hotel that we have. Yeah, you should so go got, in there and have lunch. That. You should we go in there and have lunch. Uh, Rob, dude, let me ask yeah, you this exactly. question. Let me ask you this question. Uh, well, I forgot what the question was. Just, just go ahead. Well, I am not too concerned 
the fact that if they have a problem with me putting up YouTube videos, I'll gladly go there and have a dialogue. But I'm going to record it, and I'm going to let them know, hey, I'm recording this. You know, if, if you have a problem with reporters, then just say you have a problem with reporters, and we can get that on the record. And then we can have more discourse, because that's the problem. Bilderberg is all based on secrecy. So we got to stop having the secrecy continue to ebb out in through the society and culture that nobody can say anything about Bilderberg. Nobody can say anything about security. Nobody can say anything about anything. We just have to sit here, shut up, and take it as these elites come up here to this mountain retreat, invade this town, and put all these people essentially on lockdown. It's disgraceful. And my question was, uh, you, you went and talked to locals to see what they think about the situation. You were saying the old people were scared. I guess they've seen this before. They know how to submit. But they yeah, said the young I, people I were just a ignorant. A lot of the young people, a lot of their answer was, I said, look, you have to put out a guess. What is the Bilderberg group? A music group? No, it's not a music group. And then I would explain to them what Bilderberg is. And I'm like, do you think we should have secret meetings? One guy actually said, yes, we should. And then I had to talk to him a little bit more. And then I said, I'm going to ask you again. Do you think we should have... We should have these meetings in secret, and we don't know what's going on. He's like, no, that's bad. These were the two buddies that didn't speak much English. They said, listen, you need to go back to your house, look it up on the Internet, and start talking to your friends about it, because that's the only way this is going to change. This is only going to change when we start talking about secret elite meetings that we can't talk about, that press are invited to. The head of The Economist is invited to. This. I mean, there's all kinds of uh, – Bloomberg chief is there. Okay, but they're not going to talk about it. Hillary Clinton's – Hillary Clinton's chief advisor is on the list. And, and look at this. They can only operate in secret so they can tell the public none of these groups exist. Since they've told the public this forever, they're desperate to keep the public from learning that no, actually, these groups do exist. Uh, Rob, great job. I want to come back and get Josh's take uh, on what's happened in the last 24 hours. Then we're going to play the clip of the checkpoint. Then I'm going to get the John Bounds report. Uh, and then uh, you guys are going to go out and try to find the federal police on video. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Cobra Leader. You pathetic little worm. How dare you call me Mr. Cobra? I don't know, but whoever's doing that Cobra voice is good. I mean, that is a dead ringer for the 1980s cartoon. That person has got skills as a voiceover person. Cobra. Our Cobra forces are in control in Austria. We have the government serving us as we destroy their sovereignty. <laughs> Hail Cobra! The foolishness of the public will allow the final takeover. Oh, our reporters are so s scared. The special ops Cobra team is after them. As if we didn't already know you guys are crooks. <laughs> I always love it when I get a death threat. Or a dirty trick or something. Or, or the feds will be harassing me in person sometimes when I've covered Bilderberg or other events. And they'll, they'll, they'll be freaked out that I'm not scared and I start laughing at them. And, I'll, and, I, and, I, and I, I've said on air, too, <laughs> don't you get it? I already know that the government runs the child kidnapping rings and ships in the drugs. I already know you run the major mafias. I already know you kill people. What do you think I'm doing? I'm engaging you. Do whatever you're going to do. I'm not scum like you. You go to your daddy Satan anytime you want. I'll never join you. You understand that filth? Most of you are too cowardly to admit what side you're on. I know. Scum. Think you intimidate us? You don't do anything. Your criminal activities and your attempt to smash free speech will blow up in your face. So go ahead and play your cards. Put them on the table. Play your hand. Sick of it. Sick of you getting away with all your crap. And now you want to silence everybody worldwide and silence the press so you can have your way with the rest of humanity? So you can abort hundreds of millions of more babies every year worldwide? No! So you can kill old people? So you can put veterans on don't treat lists? So you can treat humanity like crap? Build a world where parasites and psychopaths run everything? No! Good people are stronger than you. We're going to get a hold of your arm, like Beowulf grabbing Grendel's arm. We're going to tear it politically out of the socket. And you already know we've got our hand on your arm. You're not going anywhere. You look over at us and say, you know, I'm big and evil. You don't think we don't already know what slime you are?
Get it through your head. I know. I know. Do you understand? I know. I know. I know you better than you do. I know. You're a bunch of snakes to be trampled underfoot, and you will be in the dustbin of history. Excuse me, let me settle down before I get to these reports. Just police harassing our reporters, police trying to intimidate free speech, police trying to act like we're criminals and bad, makes me want to throw up while a bunch of criminals, known criminals meet in secret on taxpayer dime, hoping we don't expose their, their, their criminal operations. We've already exposed them, and we're not going to stop. And it's not just InfoWars. We've already reached critical mass, and everybody knows it. It is my goal to face you. It is my goal. Escape is not our plan. Let's go ahead now. We're not cowards like you. We don't operate in packs like you. We're individuals. We value freedom above everything else. We value justice above everything. We value defense of the innocent above everything. I detest you. You hate us? I hate you right back. Let's go to Josh Owens. Excuse me, Josh. Go ahead. Uh, give us your take. Josh Owens, reporter, Infowars.com. They're in Austria seeing the disgusting worship of tyranny, the disgusting police just rolling out a simpering, hateful red carpet against the locals, just, just, just brooding over them, sycophantically crouching down to lick the hands of the filthy, fetid Bilderberg, wart-covered uh, proboscis of, of, of Henry Kissinger, vomiting delicious goodies into their mouths. Go ahead. Josh Owens, Infowars.com. Surprisingly enough, when I got up this morning to leave this hotel to go meet Dew at the cabin, the police presence has ramped up an insane amount. When I pulled out of this hotel driving down the street, there were 15, 16, that I could see because the roads are windy up on this mountain, of uh, police caravans, vans, completely packed full, probably, what would you say, 20, 20 policemen in each van behind me. So I swerved over. You can see uh, the video on the Alex Jones channel. I swerved over up. and pulled the camera up, and you can see them just passing by the car, one after the other. The ones I got on camera, I think 14, 15, there were even more before that. It's just unbelievable that there are this many police out here, and it hasn't even started yet. Well, when they violate free speech and and and... and protect these criminals from the light of exposure, not from violence. When they do this, they transmute themselves from police into true agents of evil. Absolutely. And you can see the citizens in Austria, a lot of the people that we talk to today, that do talk to today, they had gone through checkpoints. And they didn't really seem to mind it that much. They didn't really seem to bother them that much. They were aware of the checkpoints. They weren't necessarily even aware of what was going on. So I think that that means that this kind of stuff Probably not this level of intensity, but this kind of stuff probably happens frequently. And we're going to see it, and we see it now. Yeah, it's good. Since more time more. of Hitler, we do it. We keep it. Uh, since Hitler, we like it. It's good. Hitler, good. Yeah. It's going to be interesting what the Cobra, if it is Cobra, has to say about whatever video we posted on YouTube. As oh, my gosh. Cobra doesn't like it. Cobra doesn't like our free speech. You know what they can do? Up a rope, don't you, Josh? <laughs> I think so. Uh, well, hey, you guys seem very excited. Do, do, do already confronted this one out of control cop. Uh, are you intimidated by them, uh, Josh? I don't. You're not acting like it. No, I'm not intimidated by them. And I just, I'm, I'm actually, I don't want to say I'm excited, but I'm very interested to see what they have to say. I. I, I why are they coming back to the cabin that that Jew is staying at that we're that we're based out of? Why are they coming back there to see our passports again and to talk to us about a YouTube video as if a YouTube video is such a major threat to the masters that they're serving? It doesn't makes no sense. Well, they think you're going to roll over like a dog, a whipped dog on your back, and begin, you know. Uh, it's just it's just crazy. I mean, it's just it shows how out of control government is. We just lost our Skype feed. Uh, let's go to phone. Let's contrast that to the U.K., where the police, we had over 3,000 people there. It was a huge event, international news. No one was arrested. One guy jumped the fence and was detained. 
We exposed it. The media had to admit, yeah, it's a bad thing. The Bilderberg's happening. Probably illegal. Uh, in the U.S., the police leave us alone. Just no media covers it. Just showing how controlled things are here. But in Austria, it's worse than third world police state Turkey where we covered it. There, the police were like real apologetic, but we are told not to let you film it all. Please don't. They get angry if we don't. They were just scared. And then following us around, filming us and taking photos, but they look very embarrassed. In Austria, they just get off on it. What is it like for you, Josh, to see the ecstasy that these guys have prancing around in their uniforms? Well, listeners can see in the video I posted last night of our confrontation at the checkpoint. The one guy, that's why I, I, stopped, I froze the still of him looking into the car. He walked by the car, and you can see this in the video. He walked by the car, leaned over, looked in with just those dead eyes, looked in and put his hand on his gun as if we were about to do something, as if he was about to have to use his gun on us because we were sitting in the car, being very polite at that. And so he comes over to do and makes this smart comment. And then he goes into a tirade, basically making himself look like a complete moron, acting like they are the saviors of people. And he said something like, we do not protect just this week. We protect all year. It's our job. You know, putting himself on such a high pedestal that it was it was laughable almost. I mean, the arrogance of these people. Can this guy even do a Cobra Commander imitation? No. I mean, you know, that's the real test. I think that's what we'll ask. When we go to the police station. <laughs> oh, all right, Josh Owens, great job. Um, I, so you're going to go to the police station, and I would just be filming openly, and they say, what are you doing? They say, well, you got cameras right here. You have checkpoints. I mean, isn't your national symbol a camera? Uh, or is it an ostrich? Or is it Arnold Schwarzenegger's, you know, rear end with all the uh, steroid injection shot points? Uh, I, I mean, what is it? Is it Kurt Voltime, you know? And then just point out, hey, they're looking for us. Here we are. We're evil reporters. We turn ourselves in. We're so horrible. Um, obviously, cash a lot of your equipment back at one hotel because if they really get nasty, uh, they may try to, you know, grab all your stuff and it, Lord knows do what. But just get ready uh, and, and take a photo before you go in and tweet that out uh, at Real Alex Jones. But, uh, Josh, uh, when are you planning to do that so we can maybe uh, see you on live stream, maybe see if you can Skype as you go in? Uh, we are going to go as soon as we get off the show. Okay, how far away is it so I can time it, you know, to make sure you get out of the car and go in um, right before you get there? The station is probably 10 miles from where we are right now. All right, is it a state police, local police, or federal? Uh, I believe it's um, local police. Well, I know that there's a smorgasbord of uh, different police out there, but maybe you should just go find the... the uh, I know some are feds, some are state police. Are those checkpoints federal or state mm. police checkpoints? I believe they're state police. Well, why don't you go find their lordships? Uh, you could go find them there, too. And, uh, you know, pull up, get out. What are you doing talking to us? We are such gods. You do not talk to me, scum. Well, we're going to do whatever you want. Go find the state, the feds, uh, the local police. Do whatever you want. Uh, Josh, great job. We really appreciate your work. We'll be watching. Call us, Skype us right before you do it, okay? Absolutely. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Uh, we're going to skip this network break, the only one of the day, so that I can get to the actual checkpoint video that he's talking about. If you're a radio listener, InfoWars.com has the video posted. You can also watch us restream it at InfoWars.com forward slash show and send that link out to folks. Uh, we're going to post uh, on the front page the uh live link uh, video of this transmission so you can share that with friends and family as well. But this is important. And if I get excited and start barking back at the globalist uh, minions, it, 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 this is a big deal. This is the trampling of freedom. This shows you Europe's fallen to tyranny. Uh, it just shows the darkness growing all over the planet. But the good news is their agendas are in trouble. We're fighting back and we will gain ground. We will gain steam. We will defend free speech worldwide. We will defend the press worldwide. We will uh, stop NSA spying. We will turn the tide of tyranny. We have to. We don't have a choice. It's going to totally overtake us if we don't. And we're here just tip of the spear, trailblazing, telling the truth, making it safe to expose that ISIS is government run, 
making it safe for others to attack the Federal Reserve politically, making it safe, taking the heat up front to expose our government was involved in 9-11. That's now mainstream news. It's now mainstream news. The government's running ISIS, as I mentioned. That's our job. And this morning, I don't normally you know, get arrogant or on a power trip, but, but I was in the shower this morning just thinking, and I, and I just thank God. And I leaned my head up against the, 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 the stone wall, and I thought, thank God I've been protected this long. Thank God we've been so effective. Thank God that all of my problems, all of my foibles have been turned to good. The Lord works in mysterious ways, and we are just at such a legendary, epic point. Humanity is. With InfoWars right at the tip of the spear. I mean, it is just surreal. It is surreal. To know the enemy's vulnerable and know they can be defeated. That's why they're freaking out. That's why they're, 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 they have police threatening people six miles away. Because they cannot be exposed. It's game over. We have approached the enemy's main lair. I, I, I'll keep using the uh, analogy because we're talking about Germania here, but we're talking about the former Austrian-Hungarian Empire here. But, I mean, we're we're like right there in Berlin within 100 yards of, of Hitler's command base. I mean, that's the allegory. I mean, we've already, if, if people realize the power we had, the globalists have this con game where they ridicule it. Oh, Bilderberg doesn't exist. Is it a burger? What has it got cheese on it? Oh, there's no secret groups setting up trade deals that take your, there's no death panels, dude. <laughs> These crazy people, it doesn't work anymore because what they're doing is so illegal, so illegitimate, so over the top that the minute it's forced to be admitted, it's all over. That's why they're racing to get a police state in place. They think that's going to protect them when it all comes out. It's not going to protect anything. You'll be thrown into that very police state you built, idiots. Your only hope was to not build the police state, steal everything, and then run off to some country. Now that you built this whole global police state thing, it's going to be the bear trap you set for us. You didn't think, step back, boom, it's already on your leg. Blood politically is oozing out of your leg, throbbing pain. You're not strong enough to open it. And the minion you had help you open it is now looking at you and is a wolf and wants to eat you. Smells that blood. You're idiots. You are dishonorable trash. You're fools. There is no honor among thieves. You sold your birthright. You sold everything out to this evil, stinking system, all because of status or something you dreamed of having, that if you ever had status, you'd realize how it's a prison, how it's nothing. The only reason to have status and power is for service, real service. That's the only thing that empowers. Everything else brings you down. Let's go to this checkpoint footage as our reporters prepare to go find the police and go, what, we're evil? We're here with cameras? Oh, we're so sorry. Oh, we're so, it's so evil that we want to show criminal groups meeting that you're protecting. See, they're all involved in a criminal cover-up. That's why they act so guilty. Because their bosses have told them, whatever you do, you keep the press out of there. Whatever you do, you intimidate people and run them off. And they're going, sir, it is not working. They are not afraid. This is in the newspaper. What do we do? Pog your eyes out more and take the cameras, arrest them. Do whatever you have to do. Because if I kiss their rear end, they might let me join in one of their subgroups. Oh, the money. Oh, the, the, you know. I mean, th this is how these people think. It's how they operate. Bunch of social climbing nobodies. <laughs> ah, the Renaissance will smash you in its teeth. Ah, there's nothing. You can't stop humanity, fools. So never stop us. Never going to stop anything. You'll be defeated. Let's go ahead. I mean, folks, Bilderberg is so evil, so anti-human, so bloodthirsty, so wicked. That's why I get fired up. Because they are the enemy of everyone. Your children, your family, your prosperity, your wealth, your dignity, your honor. They are anathema. Let's go ahead and go to this uh, clip. I'll narrate the parts where there's no audio. Here it is. The video starts with him driving through the mountain road, coming up to the checkpoint. First, there's a few...
police vehicles, then they drive on up to the actual checkpoint, get stopped, the police scurry around. They've got an evil reporter. There's nothing worse. I notice our police have been trained reporters are bad as well. Even mainstream reporters get attacked now because the enemy, the globalists, need to turn the police to their service. And by doing this, we expose that it's happening. Well, they've gone through two different sub-checkpoints. Now they're being stopped at this. Portable buildings on the highway to search them. They just get off on the, the fact that they think they're menacing people. Okay. Yeah, for the place up here. They told us to carry that with us. Our guys are polite. They're nice. Loving to check the papers. Our police have been trained as well. He says, pull over there. Pull over there. Over the side there. Make him wait 10 minutes. And then here comes the Lucky Charms man. Mr. Arrogant. Could you please open the back side? Sure. Can you please open the back side? So she goes to search. Josh gets out to go help her open it. So all of this has gone on. The guy comes over with his hand on his gun, basically bugging his eyes out and menacing him. They just look so upset, like it's so disgusting that, that, that people would dare want to know about things. That they would dare not want to just grovel at the feet of tyranny. Just, see, they're disgusted by freedom. Speaking Deutsch? Uh, bitte? Ambition? Uh, you speak Deutsch? No, not really. I mean, not really. Very, very small. I think it's very impolite to film persons without asking them. I think it's okay. impolite. In Austria, we, we say this is impolite, okay? Right. Oh, yeah. Is, it's okay for you if I film you. Sure. But well, it's a question of character, I think, okay? Oh, you character. Yes, I think so. so, dude, that's bad character. Well, dude gets out to go talk to him. You know, I think it's a question of character that you guys have all this set up, and there's not even an event going on right now. There's not even what? There's not even an event going on right now. The event is not for, uh, for what, Thursday? Yes, but we are the police. Right. It's our job, and we get paid from Texas for controlling. I know. And not only if this, there's uh, an event, we control the whole year. Sure. I mean, don't you think? Don't you think people are? Don't you think people are are concerned about that? Like, how much taxes are they spending on this? Yes, I also spend taxes on this, but I can't but, decide it. But this is supposedly a private meeting. You know, this isn't a meeting for. Um, like, yeah, this isn't the G7. This is a yes. lot different. Yes. I mean, they say it's a private yes. meeting. They don't allow press. Yeah, we get for sure, but it's a private meeting. Yeah, but there is danger on it. And we don't just say oh, people I... that are officials, okay? Because if you have a party at your home and there comes a burglar, it's also your private home. Sure. And we save it. Right. And we also save this. They're going to save us by working for the Bilderberg Group to treat the press like garbage and put his hand on his gun and bug his eyes out. But when he didn't intimidate uh, uh, the crew, then he got mad and ran off. And then he really backed down when Rob Dew got out and was towering over him, just being polite and, and, and going, man, what's your problem? It's normal to want to cover 150 world leaders meeting in secret. What's sick is that the Western press has been so controlled, they would attend it and say it didn't exist, being brought into the criminal corrupt conspiracy. I told you we sell out a survival shield nation iodine X tube. We have a small amount that's being made right now. And then when that's gone, I don't know what's going to happen. But we have the original survival shield that a lot of folks like. It's not as strong. And it's very clean as well. Infowarslife.com. We've only got a limited amount of that as well. I didn't know this other would sell out so quick, but if you want the highest quality iodine out there, it's it's the second best after X2, and well, now it's the best because X2's gone. Infowarslife.com, Infowarsstore.com, or 888-253-3139 to fund the tip of the savage spear of liberty. And it is savage, it is true, GCN. and it is driven by will. Well, the federal police are out looking for our reporters, going to their hotel. Our reporters are about to go look for them. They can call in with audio, video. We're not sure which connection they'll be able to have at any moment. 
I have not gotten into the other news. I want to cover some of that in the meantime. When we start the next segment, John Bounds filed another uh, excellent report. The TPP is unraveling. Very exciting intel. And that ties into the hundreds of articles that go back over the last few years. Everything is rigged. The biggest price-fixing scandal ever. Rolling Stone. This is who Bilderberg is. Uh, London Telegraph. Deutsche Bank hit with largest LIBOR fine in history for fixing interest rates. And then the newest one from two weeks ago. Six banks pay $5.8 billion, five guilty of market rigging. But nobody gets in, in criminal trouble. And $5.8 billion is not even what they make in a day globally manipulating the world uh, currency rates. That's world currency manipulation. The interest rates, the stock market, the currency markets, the bond markets, it's all as rigged as a $3 bill. And these people have stolen tens of trillions to the point of they have police departments around the world acting like they're toadies. But they should all be in jail like Bernie Madoff or Ken Lay. And they're put, we've got their agenda, by the way. In fact, will you reprint me the agenda we got the Drudge link to yesterday? Uh, I forgot to go over the actual, their front agenda, but there are other agendas there at play as well. Paul Watson gets in Wednesday. He's reporting uh, just across the ocean, across the English Channel from London. So he'll be uh, there on the ground. He's reporting also at InfoWars. Dot com. But if you go to Infowars.com, you can find all the numbers to the state police, the federal police, uh, and others. And I think folks should also, something you can do is the day Bilderberg starts arriving and the second day, you can just call the hotel and ask for people's rooms or ask for by name. And uh, one morning, it was 6 a.m., my hotel phone rings. I'm about eight miles from Bilderberg in Virginia. And this guy gets on, he goes, I'm hacker such and such. Turns out it was a well-known famous hacker. I go, how'd you find out where I'm staying? He goes, I have my ways. I'm never going to air this. It's too incredible. But I want you to hear what I just recorded. And he puts it on the line of him having like a two-minute conversation with David Rockefeller. His assistant gets on the phone at 6 a.m. He called me at 6 a.m. It was like 5.30. He wakes David Rockefeller up, puts David, Ro David Rockefeller, goes, excuse me, I'll be back in a moment. This is David Rockefeller. I know his voice. You hear like a toilet flush. David Rockefeller comes back in and has a discussion about, well, uh, who is this? You know, he's like, well, I mean, I'm such and such. I'm concerned about global government and all this. He's like, well, you know, I, it's what's needed, actually, and we're working towards it. I, I just, it's epic audio. And that hacker has got that audio and never released it. By the way, you know the, the Free Syrian Army uh, the electronic Syrian army that counters the Al-Qaeda ISIS Salafist army is really just made up of a whole bunch of people. Uh, but the word is it's actually folks inside the U.S. military and NATO. You've already heard some of those folks on air saying the whole thing's a criminal operation to arm Al-Qaeda. That's now breaking big in the news. Uh, again, devastating victory uh, for freedom. But now they have hacked mm, uh, army.mil and other major sites and just put the message up there, don't fight for al-Qaeda, ISIS is al-Qaeda, your government's funding it. Right as that hit newspapers all over the world, I mean, this is a devastating victory again against the globalists. To go into stable, democratizing countries or to go into our ally Egypt, overthrow it, and then put head choppers in charge to blow up every church in the country. I mean, that ought to tell you something about who's running the show, folks. And it's got our military really, really waking up. So good job, globalist. We've got a huge second hour lined up for you. Anytime now, our reporters Rob Dew and Josh Owens reporting from Austria at Bilderberg 2015 may be calling in either by phone or video Skype as they go look for the federal police that have showed up their hotel when they were gone, wanting to know about their YouTube videos and wanting to talk to them, and were basically upset. They've gone through checkpoints, you name it. So look for that to happen. Ex-U.S. intelligence officials confirm secret Pentagon report proves U.S. complicity 
in creation of ISIS. That's from Zero Hedge. According to newly declassified U.S. document, the Pentagon foresaw the likely rise of the Islamic State. That's something they released after it got leaked that they're running it. Oh, we've got to take your rights because Al-Qaeda might attack you when they're running it. That's what ISIS is. Report, Pfizer hid link between antidepressants and birth defects, just like they hid the link to mass murder and suicide. G7 summit, President Assad could face exile in Russia and the West plan to tackle ISIS in Syria. That's their excuse to occupy Syria after they take Assad out is to take out ISIS they put in charge. Then ISIS will be given part of Syria and part of Iraq as the original payoff plan. That's why the military admits they're not allowed to bomb any real ISIS in vehicles. They're given once a week or so a brick building to bomb just to make it look like they're actually fighting them. <clears throat> truly, truly sick. So they've gone from openly backing them two years ago to randomly bombing a few buildings uh, just for the news media. I want to get to this report, TPP, The Unraveling Begins. Uh, and then after that, simply amazing parallel that Richard pointed out to me this morning. We have these two New York inmates that have basically broken out over the weekend. It's one of the top stories in the country. Oh, it's so horrible that they've gotten out. Oh, we're all in so much danger. One of them killed a sheriff's deputy. The other one beat somebody to death. It's clearly an inside job. Search for killers. Clues after brazen New York prison escape. Well, that ties into... The tens of thousands per month of illegals being released, thousands of them convicted of aggravated crimes, including rape, assault, arson, bank robbery. I mean, you can't, again, this, it's just, it, where's all the freaking out about that? Again, I'm not even against the illegals. They're just people fleeing collapsing countries. I get it. I'm against how they get off without fines. They get to drunk drive do everything else, commit felonies. Remember the railway killer mainly preyed on Hispanics. That's another thing is they mainly prey on Hispanics. They can get away with it. And on the immigrant community, that's usually what gangs do, first generation. The big point here is that the railway killer killed like, was it more than 15 people or something? He'd rape them and kill them. And, and, and they could never keep him in jail because he had a fake name. He'd get put in jail, released, put in jail, released for other crimes. He just went around crime spreeing everywhere. And we're told, just ignore it. But oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we've got criminals. Two of them that escaped to New York. Everybody's dead. It's all over. Run for the hills. Okay, uh, let's go ahead now and go to this report. Some good news. TPP, the unraveling begins. TPP will hand huge corporations the power to change U.S. laws at will, but more and more people, prominent people, are speaking out against it. Leading the charge is Senator Rand Paul. Here's John Bowne's report. The Trans-Pacific Partnership trade package is beginning to unravel, with more prominent voices slamming President Obama and the Republican leadership over the secretive deal that threatens to cost American jobs and hand big corporations new powers that would violate national sovereignty. House Majority Whip Representative Steve Scalise of Louisiana and Rules Committee Chairman Representative Pete Sessions of Texas refused to reveal to Breitbart whether they had read the TPP agreement but still said they would support the Trade Promotion Authority and allow President Barack Obama to fast-track the TPP. Lawmakers claim that TPA is separate from TPP and that they will review the final TPP agreement before it is considered by Congress. However, as Matthew Boyle explains, this explanation doesn't wash. A vote for the TPA is a de facto green light for the TPP since since there is essentially no way to halt a trade deal once it has been fast-tracked. Boyle writes, since Fast Track was created in the Richard Nixon administration, not one trade deal that started on Fast Track has been thwarted. As such, a vote for TPA is a vote for TPP, since passing TPA will all but guarantee the successful passage of TPP. Senator Marco Rubio, Senator Lindsey Graham, and Representative John Boehner are also refusing to reveal if they have visited the secret room 
to read the controversial TPP document, although all three are set to vote for the TPA. Daniel Horowitz, senior editor of the Conservative Review, writes, It is unforgivable for the Republican majority to shirk its congressional duty and refuse to read the text of a bill that will give Obama unprecedented authority over our economy. Passing a bill in order to find out what's in it is what placed the Pelosi Congress in the ash heap of history. It's not an auspicious path for ambitious politicians. The Washington Post reports the push from the president included direct calls to lawmakers, interviews with television stations in key states, and plans to bring several Democrats aboard Air Force One with him. Meanwhile, despite claims that climate change mandates would not be a part of TPP, President Obama admitted during an NPR interview on Wednesday that this would indeed be the case. By passing such mandates via the TPP, Obama could sneak through draconian climate regulations under the radar knowing that they would almost certainly be rejected by Congress on their own. This would satisfy calls by the likes of French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius, a Bilderberg member, to enforce the new rules via global treaties to cut Congress out of the equation. Obama will attend summit in Paris in December to negotiate a climate agreement. Howard Richman writes, Obama would not need to get Congress to approve the unfair climate change treaty terms that he negotiates. Instead, he could get the commission set up by the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement to add those terms to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. After that, the investor state dispute settlement provisions set up by that agreement could enforce Obama's terms through the threat of multi-billion dollar fines upon the U.S. government. Physicians are rallying as they become increasingly concerned about the passage of TPP. Prescription drug costs could waylay the affordability of biologics, and thousands of prescription drugs by drastically altering intellectual property protections. Under the TPP, corporations could sue countries for restricting their products due to legislation brought to fruition by their own government policies. The investor state dispute settlement portion of the TPP gives the upper hand. Legislative bodies would only act as advisory boards to the ruling corporatic governments. Most recently, the World Trade Organization Tribunal ruled against the United States in a NAFTA suit brought by Canada and Mexico that claim the U.S. country of origin labeling law, which requires foreign meat to be labeled as such, is an unfair and illegal trade practice. The WTO's May 18th ruling was the fourth time in three years that the global court had ruled against cool, even though U.S. courts had ruled that cool is legal. Faced with WTO penalties and threats of retaliation, the the U.S. Congress is now considering repeal of cool, and American consumers may soon lose the ability to discover if the meat at the grocery store or restaurant is U.S. raised or from Mexico, Brazil, or China. Critics of the TPP assert that the trade deal will cost American jobs and give huge corporations the power to change U.S. laws. John Bound for Infowars.com. And that's why Bilderberg is important. It is the progenitor or the granddaddy of all of this. Meanwhile, they're pushing for borders to be open across the planet. And we have Richard, Matt, and David Sweat, who escaped this weekend from a maximum security prison in New York. You've got the governor running around grandstanding like it's the end of the world. You've got checkpoints, guys with machine guns running around looking for them, saying, look out public. Oh, it's so dangerous. And I mean, I hope they catch the guys. The point is, hundreds of thousands of illegals are released every year, tens of thousands with serious felonies, many of which haven't even served time. They just have the convictions in Mexico or the U.S., break out, get out, or are released and then they're picked back up and are released again. ICE director struggles to explain release of thousands of criminal immigrants. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Director Sarah Saladina Saldana, thank you for helping me, guys, struggled to explain the reasons behind the Obama administration's release of thousands of criminal immigrants when pressed by Lamar Smith, Republican of Texas. In the fiscal year of 2014, ICE released 30,558 convicted criminal immigrants. Did you hear that? 30,000 plus convicted of 79,059 crimes, allowing them to walk free in the U.S. And folks, we're talking about everything you can imagine. 
But then two guys get out, and, and it just shows how controlled the media is. Any U.S. newspaper that reported on Bilderberg, it's newsworthy, it's pertinent. Drudge would link to it. It'd be one of the top stories. It would cause a national debate. You'd win a Pulitzer Prize because you're the mainstream media. If you did it, you'd get a Pulitzer Prize, not the people that worked on it for 40 years. And, and I think that's fair because you're the mainstream media and you're God. Well, not anymore. But see, they won't do it because they're controlled. And they know it's a, quote, career killer to report on the real shadow government. But it's already a career killer because the globalists are shutting down the old media. They don't want any media. And they're coming after the free independent press. So why have you destroyed yourselves? Why won't you report on it? Once Bilderberg kicks off officially on Thursday, there'll be some cheeky, snarky joke articles. Or if I talk about China getting caught selling babies in gold foil and make a joke, hey, I bet you're eating that inside Bilderberg, they'll all run with that and say that I was serious and then make a joke out of it. At any time, our reporters could go into the police station or find the federal police and say, we hear going to our hotel looking for us. Here we are. What's the crime of being reporters uh, from the Alps in Austria, Bilderberg 2015? Let me plow into other news right now. This story is up on RT.com. It's also mirrored at Infowars.com. Droning on forever. Boeing patents UAV that could fly indefinitely, recharging in midair. Electricity-powered drone would have a rechargeable tether cable that would connect to a power source. So the drone would fly up, lower its light cable down, and then fly in circles, basically, while it's powering back up. As drone technologies continue to advance, Boeing has raised the bar even higher. The aerospace giant has received a patent for a UAV that could fly forever, recharging in midair via a tether attached to the ground. I saw Alexander Haig back in like 1992 when he had a TV show nationwide on cable <sighs> where he had a company that was going to have blimps over every major city, but at about 100,000 feet that had solar panels on the top that would then run telecommunications, cell towers, but also spy on people. His word was security. And, and now, of course, they're launching those. I mean, they launched them a long time ago, but only in certain cities like D.C., New York. Uh, Salt Lake City, for some reason, had one. Dallas had one. And I can play you the ABC newscast and a CBS one. You can go to YouTube and type in mystery UFO over Salt Lake. And it's a giant blimp bigger than the Hindenburg. Looks like the Hindenburg. And it's got propellers on it. And it's a government blimp. We even know the model. And instead, they told the public it was an alien. They said, is it aliens? I mean, that's how they treat the public. So stupid. It's a blimp. Hundred plus year old technology. In fact, the French had hot air balloons for 400 years ago. And the Italians... They debate who invented it, the French or the Italians, probably the Italians. They've had hot air balloons for 400 plus years. They've had, well, thousands if you count the Chinese launching lanterns, but the, the hot air balloons that carry people for 400 years. And we've had dirigibles for over 115 years or so, or longer, actually. And the public thinks it's a flying saucer because they they couldn't be educated on surveillance blimps. Instead, they think it's an alien. I mean, that's what's so frustrating about this. And they've got conservative talk show hosts that will get up on television and the radio and attack this show and say there's no FEMA camps, there's no COG, there's no NSA. Now, they've changed their tune since then, but Back when they were doing that four or five years ago, saying I was a liar, I knew people that worked in their offices. And they said, no, they know it's real. We're giving them all the documents. They just have been told to do this. Imagine knowing they've got FEMA camps, 
knowing they're preparing for all this, and then you get up there and you lie because you're scared of the government. You ought to be scared of not saying something and not doing something. By the way, they found the ABC News piece out of Salt Lake. It's a giant silver blimp with rudders and tail fins. That's a naval blimp. I know that model. You can look it up. Up there surveilling people. And everybody thinks it's a UFO. In fact, can we rewind that and play the audio? Thanks. This is my frustration. Here, go ahead and roll it. Thanks. What's hovering over Salt Lake City? Is it a rocket, a blimp, a UFO? A strange object seen in the skies has residents scratching their heads. The craft floated overhead for several minutes before disappearing. Salt Lake air traffic controllers said their radar didn't pick up anything, and they have no knowledge of the craft. That's because they were told the lie. That's a shorter version of the report. There's a whole bunch of them. They go into saying, no, it must be aliens. It must be flying saucers because they don't want to tell you the feds have a giant blimp up there with ground penetrating radar, snoop systems. I mean, I told people 20 years ago about the FBI Cessnas and the Department of Energy and the EPA. They've all got them. But I knew because in East Texas, I knew folks that worked on them. And they said, oh, yeah, they're out looking for marijuana fields. They're, uh, they fly over the power plants to check to see if they're fudging their sensors that no toxic waste is coming out of the towers. But we're told to tell people that they're not government. We'll see all that was released last week. So you can hear it here 20 years ago, or you can hear it uh, you know, now from the establishment. Report Pfizer hid link between antidepressants and birth defects. Pharmacological mammoth Pfizer faces more than a thousand lawsuits. We're going to hit that in a moment. I want to get into the latest on Bilderberg and a whole other grouping of news about election 2016 here in this republic. But before we do that, I wanted to just mention that Joe Biggs earlier was showing me magazine articles and newspaper articles out of Austria, and then U.S. stories about them concerning Cobra Commandos. No, it's not a G.I. Joe show. It's a real security group that is running security, and I guess in charge of the 2,000 federal and state police, paid for by taxpayers to guard the Bilderberg Group meeting that the New York Times says does not exist. You can pull up an article out of the... New York Times, it's a film review of the film New World Order that came out in 2009, a year after Bilderberg, 2008, in Chantilly, Virginia. And they actually say that I'm in a hotel parking lot having a full-on hallucination of uh, Black Stand, Secret Service, and World Leaders. That They just said that you see Jones imagining things. That's right. None of this is real. The show isn't real. Obamacare is not real. Nobody's coming after your guns. Nobody got rid of the borders. Nobody's jacking up your taxes. Government loves you. Government's perfect. Everything's fine. So I asked Joe to get these articles together, maybe scan them or give the files uh, to the crew. So that we can show TV viewers just how amazing this is that that Bilderberg has this paramilitary group running around protecting it from the evil press, all, again, taxpayer paid for. Uh, briefly, before I get into Pfizer and uh, how they hid the link between antidepressants and birth defects, and before I get back into the fact that Everyone's freaking out. The media's freaking out about two escaped killers from New York uh, State Prison. The 30-plus thousand illegals that have been released that have felony criminal backgrounds. We have some congressional testimony uh, dealing with that and more. But briefly, 
We sold out of Survival Shield, Nation Iodine X2, the Deep Earth Crystal Source is so pure and that folks have you know had such rave reviews about because everybody knows there's a massive uh, iodine deficiency out there in the soil and in the food. That's why seafood is so important because it has a lot of iodine, has a lot of toxins as well. So the best place to get it is Deep Earth Pure Source. Well, no one else we know of has ever done that. We have. The problem is we secured some two years ago, and basically it's run out. And now we're having to secure more, and that may take some time. So we're sold out right now. We have a small amount of the iodine left. The crystals, that has been basically manufactured. But now it's got to be put in the bottles and then shipped from the uh, laboratory here in the U.S. to our shipping facility. But we're going to be out for a while of Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2. We do have the original Survival Shield that's from a kelp source, the cleanest out there after X2, super high quality, but not as strong. That's what I tend to give my children. Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. And secondarily, it's a win-win because your purchase supports the broadcast and what we're doing here. When you buy these products, it funds the whole operation so I can send three reporters to Austria to cover Bilderberg 2015 that no one else is doing yet. The big national newspapers in Europe will just report it's happening. And they've got a few pool photographers out there covering it. So we're filling that vacuum. We're filling that area that's not being um, basically dealt with by the prostitute uh, lapdog drive-by media to steal a word, a term from Rush Limbaugh. So, InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. You go there, you can find high-quality water filters that cut out the glyphosates and fluoride and other deadly chemicals that are such a big problem and such an endocrine disruptor. It cuts out the serotonin reuptake inhibitors, the SSRIs, the antipsychotics, all the stuff that's in major water supplies on record. Thousands of different things that are in the water. It, the water is impure. Our precious bodily fluids, to quote General Jack T. Ripper from Dr. Strangelove, have been compromised. How's that for your hardcore communist conspiracy? Uh, and I'm not joking. When you filter your water, it's a life changer. You do that with the oxy powder tablets that flush out the upper and lower intestine at InfoWarsLife.com. The original survival shield, the super male vitality, the super female vitality, the whole thing fused together has been life-changing for myself and so many others. And then you're also funding the tip of the spear, the true trailblazers when it comes to just hardcore Laying the facts out, InfoWarsLife.com. And there's so many other great products from Child Ease uh, to Secret 12 to Winter Sun to DNA Force to high-quality colloidal silver, silver bullet to, to, to ancient defense, high-quality organic coffee, my favorite type. We've private labeled out of southern Mexico, out of volcanic soil. Everything else is right here in the USA, but that's high-quality stuff out of Mexico. And I like to support the farmers down there. 888-253-3139, 888-253-3139. And really, one of the most important things to get if you haven't done it is oxy powder. The way it flushes out the upper and lower intestine. Uh, Rob Dew lost 11 pounds in one week, and he wasn't even a fat guy. It was just stuff in his intestines. Uh, everybody I know that has taken this has been blown away, and I mean that as a pun. Uh, this is not like hardcore herbs or, or, or toxic things or things that are you know, painful, things that are harsh. It's just time-released, high-level oxygen that time releases in the upper and lower intestines and just flushes everything out that's been in there for years in some cases. Simply amazing what it does to, for your skin, for your health, for your digestion, uh, the gut is under constant attack, and oxy powder developed by Dr. Group is used in Hollywood, you name it. It is fantastic. 888-253-3139 or InfoWarsLife.com. Report Pfizer hid link between antidepressants and birth defects. Pharmaceutical mammoth Pfizer faces more than a 1,000 lawsuits from victims who say the company knew about the relationship between birth defects and their number one best-selling antidepressant, a claim that Pfizer has, of course, battled against. Now, however, new reports have surfaced that Pfizer's own scientific advisors 
were warned of the deadly link for more than a year. Something that my team told you in 2012 was already going on. This is Anthony Gucciardi reporting, according to Bloomberg. At Pfizer, Inc., report shows a scientist warned executives last year about a potential link between the antidepressant drug Zoloft and birth defects. I, I know someone who the doctor says got Verligo or whatever Michael Jackson had from Zoloft and recommended changes to the medication safety warning. Again, I kind of inserted that statement in the middle of that line. Let me just read that again. A Pfizer, Inc. report shows a scientist warned executives last year about a potential link between the antidepressant drug Zoloft and birth effects and recommended changes to the medication safety warning. The document from a Pfizer drug safety official might complicate the company's efforts to fend off lawsuits brought by parents of children with malformed hearts. Pfizer has consistently rejected suggestions that Zoloft caused newborn abnormalities and Monday, the document was taken out of context by lawyers suing the company. Here's what we know about serotonin reuptake inhibitors. They are super toxic across the board. They're based in fluoride molecule. And they just have a laundry list of things they do to you. They're extremely toxic. They're extremely addictive. They're extremely psychoactive. They are in the halogenic. The hallucinogen class. They are hallucinogenic. They are psychotropic. And they also are linked to Alzheimer's. Uh, they're linked to diabetes. I mean, they're bad news. And they push them on everybody. There are more than 50 different types of serotonin reuptake inhibitors just in the United States. And they usually are stronger than the last one. The average foster child in America, 70 plus percent are on psychotropics, look it up, or antipsychotics. They're on mind-altering drugs, either either speed or antipsychotics or antidepressants. But 70 plus percent in national studies, look it up, are on a behavioral modification drug. And on average, they're on seven drugs total that are mind-bending because they start acting worse and worse. And the answer is more and more drugs. Did you guys actually find the headline? That was quick. That one was saying all Americans. We're looking for foster. Okay, yeah. I just remember a WOAI report uh, on the state numbers, and they had state hearings, and the state defended it and said, well, the fact that we're putting 70, I think it was like 71% of our kids uh, on these drugs is okay because that's a national average as well. Um, in fact, it was the headline was over two thirds of Texas foster children on mind altering prescriptions. Congress asked why foster children take more mental health meds than other kids. That's Yahoo News 2014. The point is, when you're in the government's grasp, they do horrible things. By the way, I'm not doing a cliffhanger here. I don't really do that. I have a tendency to say we have big news coming up and then just start saying it right then. Our reporters were only 10 miles away from the state police headquarters they were going to go to and say, here we are, we hear the feds that are commanding you are looking for us. We're just reporters. We have nothing to hide. They would already be there, but the checkpoint has a huge traffic backup now, and so they've been in traffic for almost an hour trying to get 10 miles in Austria because of the checkpoints they've set up all over the place. So they are in traffic, in a checkpoint. They're unable to get Skype right now, so you can't see that, but they are shooting HD video uh, so that we can show the traffic jam. There's the headline, traffic jam caused by Bilderberg security. Traffic jam caused by secret government conspiracy. I, I, I know I told you guys to do it, but uh, we've called them and told them to shoot video right of that traffic jam. Fantastic, great job. Now, I mentioned this earlier, but I forgot to play the clip, so I'm going to do it now. And it ties into this report. Hillary's plan to stuff the ballot box by Phyllis Schlafly of WorldNet Daily. She spotlights the devious plan to capture even more illegal alien votes. And then she goes over Clinton. Now all these states are issuing the illegals driver's license, then letting them vote. Illinois and New York are saying let illegals vote openly.
So first they denied that was the plan. Now they're just, I mean, can I go to Mexico or Nigeria or China and show up and get free health care and have my baby and then vote? No, they'd laugh at me, and they should. Of course, you can't vote in China, so I guess it's kind of a non-issue. Because it's so free. It's the model, of course. All the trendies are into it. They're also into, quote, killing their kids. It's so sexy. You think I'm, if you're a new listener, we actually have clips of communists saying, I kill my kids. I kill my kids. I love killing my kids. I love Satan. I love long arm hair. I love stinking. I, I just, I just love it. That ties into ICE director struggles to explain release of thousands of criminal migrants. 79,000 crimes plus committed by 30,000 released just last year. We don't have numbers yet. By the way, ICE just released 30,000 more violent criminal illegal aliens onto American streets who mainly attack Hispanics. <sighs> I guess we want to collapse like Mexico. We've got to get a handle on this right now, folks. It's, it's out of control. That ties into congressional testimony earlier this year with families talking about losing their loved ones to criminal illegals who've been released when no one else would be, be they Hispanic, black, or white, or Asian, if you're a citizen, you get put in prison. But if you're an illegal, you are a magical creature who gets released over and over and over again. Let's go to that testimony. My name is Jamil Shaw. My son, Jamil Andre Shaw II, was murdered by a dreamer, DACA recipient, a child brought to this country by no fault of his own. My family's peace and freedom were stolen by an illegal alien from Mexico. He was brought here by his illegal alien parents and allowed to grow up as a wild animal. Some people believe that if you are brought over by no fault of your own, that it, that it makes you a good person. They want us to believe that Dream Act kids don't murder. I am here to debunk that myth. Kids brought over the border by no fault of their own do kill Americans. How many Americans killed by illegal aliens are too many? One, two, hundred, thousand, hundred thousand? Ask any parent whose child was murdered by an illegal alien how many is too many. As one of those parents, I am here to tell you that one is too many. My son, Jamil Shaw II, was murdered while walking on his own street three houses down from his home. An illegal alien on his third gun charge was visiting a neighbor when my son was coming home. He shot my son in the stomach and then in the head, killing him. Do black lives really matter, or does it matter only if you are shot by a white person or a white policeman? The well, yes, that is the only time it matters because George Soros wants us all killing each other. And... Again, the, the gang culture, whether it be white, black, or Hispanic, is being protected and being fostered and being allowed to grow. Because if you read Zbigniew Brzezinski's Between the Technotronic Era, they admit that governments like to have combines of criminals that run everything in certain racial areas so that they can basically control those populations through the criminals that actually work for them. And just like it's come out that some of the biggest Mexican drug cartels work for the CIA and the DEA, destabilizing Mexico, just like ISIS works for our government. This is the sick plan. So they sell it like, oh, you just don't like Hispanics. Um, no, I love everybody, as long as they're not welfare head criminals. And what's happening is to the entire world, China's now replaced Mexico as the biggest destination group coming here china runs ads saying move to america get everything free and the deadbeats are coming over here we advertise to get all the deadbeats of the planet it's a joke alex jones here back live speaking of bilderberg here is the new york times former governor jeb bush's chief of staff responded a few weeks ago bloomberg covered it to our tweet asking him are you going to be attending bilderberg because you're going to be in germany and austria when it's going on and his chief of staff said no and the media made jokes about it and said, how dare they even respond to InfoWars? That's not real media. Really, they're holding the G7 in Europe right before Bilderberg, and the very people that are at the G7 will be there. And so many other people that are about to run for president, like Bill Clinton and others, go to Bilderberg first to get vetted. But again, it's the mainstream media's job to make jokes out of that 
Here's the headline out of the New York Times today. Berlin Leary of One Bush prepares to meet Jeb. And he's going to be giving a speech there. Hey, Alex, we have Rob on the line. They are at the location. They are at the police station. Okay, let's go to Rob Dew in Austria reporting on Bilderberg. He just joined us. Uh, Austrian federal police are searching for InfoWars reporters. They came to their hotel. Our crew was gone. Josh and, uh, of course, Rob Dew. And so, uh, Dew, uh, go ahead, take over. Okay, well, I'm about to walk in. Um, I'm going to show everybody a shot of the police station. Can you hear me loud and clear? Yes, we can, sir. Okay, so I'm about to go in. Um, I, these look like the police vans that were uh, driving around. You know, these are the, this is the same type of police van that was at our location earlier today. So this looks like it's the same. And when they say uh, turn your camera from. off, just, just, just say to them, it's for my protection. Right. Uh, you guys have already been very rude and aggressive, and uh, I'm here to file a complaint about them going okay. to your hotel. Go ahead. Right. Get on the offense so with these people. Okay, I'm walking in now. And, uh, Inside the Austrian right substation of the state yeah. police. Right. And tell them, uh, tell them the feds are looking for you, and you're, and you're there to talk to them. Okay. How do I change this to me? Is there a way to do that? Is just, oh, you hit that? Okay. Okay. There you go, guys. Good job. Yeah. There, here I am. I'm going to hit the... I'm hitting the intercom there to talk to them. They're probably freaking out, but, uh, you know. I love your 1776 hat. Oh, uh, you know, I had to, had to wear a little plug if you're gonna if you're gonna get arrested <laughs> that, that was the first time we fought the uh, germans was uh 1776 when they brought over the hessians of course most of them just yes. defected and joined us we just want to invite all the germans and austrians to join the move for freedom there's a lot of great folks over there in fact some of our most active listeners Sorry, are over there, there? Oh. okay i think they it looks like they have someone in there right now so they're not letting a couple people two people in but uh We'll see. This is this is uh, the Austrian police substation. Hi. Hello. Did I just talk to you on the phone? Yeah. Okay. I called in. My name is Rob Dew. I'm a journalist out of Austin, Texas. How are you doing? I'm fine. Sir. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm broadcasting live for my protection. We're on a live radio show right now. But I got a call from my hotel manager, and he said that the. I don't know. You don't know. No. Phone. Well, this is. Well, we're we're all live. Okay. Just yeah. So. Which hotel do you stay? I'm at the Rump Rumpferhof Hotel. And just it's tell them you're Duken. tired of being harassed. Yeah. So they've came to our they came to our hotel twice, and today they came and we were there. Or we weren't there, and so my hotel manager called me and wanted to know. Hi. How are you doing? You're staying in Rockford room, right? Yes. Yeah, as my colleagues here told you yesterday, it's not allowed to film the police or anything from the police stations. Thank you. Goodbye. Ask okay, him what the they law didn't is. Okay, they did I will tell them you'll turn. So oh, look at those guys. They think they're so cool. <laughs> Hold on. All right, dude. Go ahead and put your camera down. We come back in 70 seconds. Put your camera down. And then try to be nice to them. Play good cop with them. <laughs> Thank you for listening oh, to Oh, boy. I, you know, I've never been over there, Visit but my grandfather's were. Today. We'll be back. Live video feed, audio Live feed from, from the state police headquarters in the area. Rob Dew's just been thrown out. Tell us what happened during the break, Rob. I couldn't skip that break. Yeah. It was in the hour. Sure. Well, you probably saw what the, the the large guy came out. They seem to have a size differential. Whenever the large guys come out, there's always a, a, a bit of air, air and angst about them. But he came out and said, you Rob Dew? Yes, we, we told you not to film the police, and uh, and then he said something else and, and then left. So I, I guess maybe that's what they're going to tell me, not to film the checkpoints anymore, which that seemed to be the message that they wanted to give me. Um, they never said, don't film the checkpoints. All the guy said was, that's rude to do, to film checkpoints or to film the police not, when they had cameras yeah, on. Yeah, you tried to ask him what the law is. What did he say to that? 
Hey, he didn't answer me. He walked off, and then the other guy got all snippy. He goes, there's no discussion during the break. He said, there's no discussion. We have the whole thing on video. Josh shot it as well. I was also recording audio, and we had a, a, a hidden pin camera. So I guess we've given them all our intelligence at this point. Um, well, we're not hiding anything. To you told them you were filming. Yeah, I told them we were filming. I told them we were broadcasting live. And, uh, you know... All I can say is uh, they have a, a very pretty receptionist. <laughs> well, you're married and Josh has got a girlfriend. That's right. But what That's happens right. in Austria uh, stays in Austria. No, 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 no. She no, did look no, receptive like, like she wanted to you to pick her up. So. Nah, <laughs> no. It was uh, it, it's just <laughs> very it, – it, this is just a very weird police state. There's not a lot of – you know, communication from them. Uh, I have no problem with not filming their checkpoints. They never said that. Oh, give me a break. Like, their checkpoints on a highway. They got the cameras well, exactly. all aimed at us. And I mean, look, you're just the acting thing. Yeah. like you've done something wrong. Wait, no, here's the thing, Alex. When we went there through the, through the first checkpoint, the first time, we didn't even have our cameras going, and they flipped out. They were flipping out on us. They had their hands on their guns like we were doing something bad because we showed them U.S. passports. We showed them U.S. passports. The Yankees are attacking. Uh, the, the, that's got yeah, a Russian and, accent. And, oh, and, no, and, the Yankees like, are here. Oh, no. Hans, what's run. What's the big deal? So, so, you know, of course, the next time we're going through the checkpoint, we're going to film it. And they got all mad that the second time we went through the checkpoint, we filmed it. And then they tried to tell me I was rude for filming them. You know, and I'm like, look. I'm not trying to be rude. The point is, they keep gonna, turning it around. They're, like they're dude, 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 this is what they do. Yeah. They make it like you're a criminal, so you didn't defend yourself, changing the subject to them having checkpoints, trying to act like the press is illegal, covering a very important event. I would say to them next, is filming illegal in Austria? Tell me the law. We are press. Right. Why are you covering up the criminal meeting? Because as right. soon as we okay. did that in Switzerland, they stopped acting aggressive. We said, go back and check with your canton leaders, state leaders. You're going to get in a lot of trouble. And then next, they were very polite and helpful after those exchanges. So I would just say, hey, we're not criminals. We're here to cover this. You let us in the country. You ought to be glad we're covering it. Don't you want to know what's going on? Because I guarantee you, those people don't know anything. They're in there talking about sports scores all day. Right. And taking selfies. Um, we're actually going back up to the other checkpoint, so I don't know how, how, how much longer is the show going? We've got an hour left. So how, okay, how far ahead. away from you, that you, checkpoint are you? I would say about six minutes. Okay, we'll just we had a little bit of traffic getting down here, but after that, we're you know it's it's smooth sailing. We'll do so this. It, Pull the town over. seems to shut down at seven. Yeah. Pull over. Take a break. I'm going to come in, talk to for about five minutes about Bilderberg and some interesting developments with Joe Biggs, but be on Skype with us. Okay. And then and then with Joe Biggs in here with us, you can then go live up to the checkpoint. And, okay. when, and when they come and say, I already told you no filming, you say, tell me the law. I want to know the law. Tell me why. Do you have cameras? I guarantee you they've got cameras at the checkpoint. And so just talk to them. Because believe me, they right. don't want to escalate this. They'd love to arrest you and get brownie points uh, with their masters. But they've been told don't do that because it'll draw more attention. And then the press will be forced to report on the criminal mafia meeting, Mafia 2.0 taking place. Rob, dude, just stay on the line with us. We're going to come right back to you. Joe Biggs is here with us. He's got news on Bilderberg, big news from their own press. Very interesting. But before that, we've got Rob Dew and Josh Owens about to pull up to the checkpoint. They've been looking for him. They came to their hotel that they dare videotape them. Let's take you now live to Austria, the site of Bilderberg, the criminal group meeting being protected by state and federal police. Josh Owens and um, Rob Dew, you are now in charge. Go ahead. Josh, uh, or Jones, I just want to show you something here. If you look on that inner helping sign, we just went by. It had a uh, InfoWars bumper sticker on it. I and, want to be clear. Uh, so, that's not you guys doing that, is it? No, not at all. I'll, I'll go by one more time. Or I'll go by one more time, and then we'll head out. And slow down right there. So because people, our stickers are all over the world. I mean, our stickers yeah, are all over the world. Yeah. But but I mean, there uh, you go. Really, I want to know. I there mean, it is is. He, it's, yeah, it's it's the dot in the eye on the inner Alpen. So I just wanted. To, we were just happened to be driving by that spot again. We saw that as we pulled in today or uh, yesterday. I took a picture. Was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. I guess. 
I took a photo of it and, tweet it. Uh, and tweeted that out. I'm going to yeah. tweet it. And, All right. Oh, yeah, well, tell folks where you video. are, what's about yeah. to happen. Some stations don't carry that first five minutes. You were thrown out of the police station. They said, you rob do, you not film police. <laughs> yeah, we already told you that. And then no one ever said you can't film the police. No one ever said that. That's the funny thing. It's like they're acting like this is old news. And they never said to me, don't film the police. He's uh, saying they came to your hotel to tell you that. Yeah, they came to my hotel. And that's, you know, really, that's what you came to my hotel for? Don't put up YouTube videos of, of uh, police? I mean, what do you have to hide? We obviously, that's what they're worried about us. We obviously have something to hide. You know, they, they freaked out and we drove. Now, this is, we're going to drive past. This is where the checkpoint was yesterday. They've since moved it. Uh, By the way, the right TPP is in trouble. They're, uh, the EU's in trouble. Their whole operation, as we expose, it's in trouble. They wanted this to all be covert. Please continue. Yeah. So here's where they, they the checkpoint was yesterday. This is now it's all clear. Uh, suddenly, you know, and and from what we heard, this this happened because people, I guess, people were complaining. So they've made the security area smaller because this is where they had us yesterday. This is where we pulled off. And there's a, a, a giant thing that says, we're filming you. There's a giant camera sign right there that says, we're filming you. And so they got, but they got mad when I was filming and called, called me rude. A roving check. Well, so tell we them when they say that it's bad character to film, say, well, you're filming down the street. You're filming here. Right. And I don't know if we're going to start losing signal. We're, we're going out of the, out of the, uh, the town area and going up the mountain. And it's a notoriously spotty service up here. As we've been finding out from uh, from our different trying to, we see now the best reception down in side tell. So I'll give you a, a side view. This is looking down the mountain right now. And you do roving checkpoints beautiful whenever they area. think there's going to be a, a suspected attack or something like that, so they can keep people thinking. So that's why I'm saying it, it's kind of shady. They've got these Cobra guys in there and they're moving their checkpoints around. We're going to get your military perspective in a moment on that. You've dug up some interesting stuff out of the Austrian and Western press on Cobra. But before we get into Cobra, uh, uh, I'm going to stay with these guys until they hit the checkpoint or until their feed goes out. Amazing view of your radio listener. Looks like they're thousands of feet up on the mountain. It's frozen with the town down below them. Uh, I tell you, this has got to be, though, even though it's stressful, guys, a good place uh, to be reporting from. Very, very beautiful. I expect to see Snow White any moment pop out. Any other comments, Rob Dew or Josh Owens? It's very comfortable. If you can hear me now, it's uh, very comfortable in terms of temperature. It's nice and cool, but it's not super humid, even though it's been raining. It rained yesterday, it rained today, but it doesn't feel really, uh, uh, really humid like you get normally in Austin, Texas. It's, uh, it's a different a different kind of uh, temperature up here in the mountains. It just feels like you're and, breathing uh, real air. We're losing their feed right now. You're listening to Bilderberg 2015 coverage that U.S. media will not cover. It's all so, over the foreign press. Here's the checkpoint. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Coming through here. So we're going to find out what's going on here. And yeah. let your Skype stabilize. Stabilize your rear deflectors. Watch for enemy fighters. <laughs> yeah. Bring up that you're filming up front. To just tell them, you know, is this a free country or not? We're saying, we're saying, yeah. The, uh, inter hopping. No, not inter -hop. I'm, uh, I'm broadcasting live on Skype to U.S. United States, America. Just letting you know. Um, we come from America. Got, oh, look, they, got you. <laughs> they have a picture of Josh and my uh, passports. They're actually looking at us right now. So. Can you imagine? America's going to be just and like so this. The, one of the soldiers is, is telling them that, or one of the officers, I'm sorry, is... Uh, they're having him pull over for further interrogation. These are the ones that keep filming. Why aren't they scared? We're going to be breaking all this down uh, and some developments with Cobra. 
the private yeah. military yeah. security force. Well, they had a picture of your license plate, so they were obviously filming. They, they had your, uh, they had my passport. Photo. Yeah, but they yeah. said it's very impolite and okay. bad, bad, bad behavior. I'm going to put this back on me. Th that you film them, Rob. <laughs> Rob, you've been directed over to the side of the road, correct? I don't believe they're getting my feed. We're getting intermediate feed from them. Uh, yep, Skype just uh, disconnected. Let's try to reconnect with them. Uh, Joe Biggs, watching this, you've been over in Germany and Austria when you were in the military. Uh, what do you make of their behavior? It's pretty intense. Uh, the thing that uh, that makes me worry a bit is the fact that, like you said earlier, you're making this analogy comparing Cobra to FBI, and I found some documents that pretty much states right here that they are a mixture of much like uh, America's FBI uh, hostage team. And now, like are they said, private or are they federal? Because U.S. media and other media just simply said they were private security. They're federal. Yeah, they are a federal group. And then you were reading out of a German newspaper where they admit that they're at a castle where they used to torture people. Yeah, it's called the Schonau Castle. And it's a uh, document cam on that, guys. It's around Vienna. It's 19 miles south of uh, the ancient Austrian capital. It's a 60 room castle with a, a surrounded by a 70 acre wooded park and uh, surrounded by a 15 foot high wall. In that area, and a lot of people said this is Center for Spies and Brainwashing. So this is an area where they... This is a mainstream newspaper saying torture, brainwashing, you name it. From back in 1972. So you've got this document over that's here. That's where they're based now. Yeah. And that's the, the castle that they, uh, when I was able to do some... And so on. now it's a shadowy federal group that they claim is also does private security. Like, I guess that's their argument because they're for Bilderberg, but really it's the government doing it. Uh, and then it's linked back to a torture castle. Yeah. So I guess Cobra is probably named after these guys. They're not naming themselves after Cobra. Yeah. I guess we found the real Cobra. Yeah. <laughs> Cobra. Cobra currency will defeat the press. How dare you try to film our operations? I've brought world leaders here to pledge allegiance to Cobra. The Americans will soon go under TPP control. Sorry. We have Rob Dew on the phone now. Rob Dew, go ahead. Yes, uh, right now they're searching through the car. Um, this is a full car press. We haven't been searched like this before. So uh, this is, I guess this is what it's, it's like in a free country. Ask them, say, is Austria free or did it go back under the Soviet Union when we weren't looking? I think, I think they can hear you now. I have you on speakerphone. So, Attention from the United States. The world is seeing you engage in police state activities and violating the right of the press. Your harassment is being duly noted. You're violating the Geneva Convention and your own federal and state laws, guarding the criminal Bilderberg group from the light of day. We know you've been harassing our reporters and trying to violate their right to gather information. So I'm here as Alex Jones communicating with you to simply let us engage in the First Amendment you know who we are. You know we don't have criminal records. You know we simply gather information as legitimate press. So I would ask you to simply stop harassing our reporters that are trying to do their job. Why do you do host us? We do not host you. We love you from America. Lots of love. Mwing, mwing, mwing. <laughs> Oh, there's, a, there's a nice gentleman over here hearing everything you're saying, and he seems to be nodding in approval. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> he probably thinks there's a crazy goblin on the other line. He wouldn't be too far off. <laughs> Anyways, uh, dude, what else is going on now? Uh, right now, they're going through our stuff. I'm still sitting in the car. Um, I haven't popped out yet. They haven't asked me to get out. We have some people. We have two of them. And uh, so... Josh is disclosing our locations for them. We're being all up front. I've got to skip this activities. network break. Folks, just support us at InfoWarsStore.com, GCNLive.com, because we lose a lot of money when we skip these breaks. But got to do it with our reporters. They're live on the ground. Rob, dude, tell us what else is happening. So uh, Josh is explaining to him right now where we're staying. Um, we have fully, uh, they pulled us over. We pulled the car up. They were looking in the trunk. I don't know. I think I think journalist uh, journalism. I don't know. If, is is journalism illegal? 
He's not answering me. Tell him that we want to be his Liebling and his Liebchen. <laughs> I think I know what that means. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to just be nice to give these guys the benefit of the doubt. Look, we're just pressed. They're to cover an international conference. It's not illegal. The world is seeing this is a police state. You've already come to our hotel. We came to talk to you, but notice they don't talk to us. They just continue to act like it's dirty and it's bad right. to cover the press. Okay. Tell them to look up Canada and the firestorm that got I'm started gonna, when they arrested I'm me. Pop out real unless, unless they're done, let's see if they're... You can try to... Well, no, they're going to probably send somebody else over to talk to you now. Y'all had, um, I don't know who came to our hotel today. They were looking for me. We went down to the police station. Okay. And uh, anyway, we're on uh, live via cell phone now. It's not video or anything. But they were, um, so basically we're just, we went down to the police station to talk to them. And now we're here and I don't know. We're not trying to mess with anybody. We just don't want to be messed with doing our job. That's that's kind of how we feel. Thank you. We're finished. We're finished? Okay. All right. Y'all have a good day. Be safe. Thank you. Have a good one. And tell them Hell Cobra. So they've, uh, they're, no, I'm not going to say Hell Cobra. <laughs> Hell Cobra. Um, good. Good. <laughs> Very nice. Did you like that one? Yeah. Uh, these guys seem to be. I don't know how the communication is. They did have photo. Oh, no, did they give you your our, our passports back? Yeah, I think we need our passport and the booking pass. No, 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 no. Oh, no, here they are. They're back here. Okay, here we're good. We're good. Okay, I just want to make sure they gave us our passports and our this booking paper. This is probably the most important printout I've ever printed out. Out of all the printouts I've done at InfoWars, this booking paper has saved our butts many a time. Um, just by showing that we're staying up the hill, they allow us to continue. Well, that is the big. Uh, let's just stop right the there. The, they would love to stop you, but they don't, they know it'll make a major incident. But let's just stop right. right there and think about where we are in America and in the world. There's a globalist meeting of yeah. 150 people meeting. It's already in the British news that it's totalitarian, that it's illegal. It's in the German news saying it's very suspect, and they've got checkpoints miles and miles away from a private hotel checking everybody. Three days before it officially kicks off, or now two and a half days, they've had these checkpoints for over a week and a half, the press reports, in Austria. This shows the totalitarianism that this group's trying to put out worldwide. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they're on record. They're the ones behind victim disarmament. They're the ones behind open borders. They're the ones behind carbon taxes. They're the ones behind it all. And And... I want you guys to now continue on to your hotel, continue driving on cell phone. I want to have you co-host with us here from Austria, Rob Dew and Josh Owens. But first, you have something else to add? Well, I just want to say where they have the second the new checkpoint now, um, this is still a through road. This is not the only road going to the hotel. They, they have a spot that they could block off that is another three miles up the road here that would that wouldn't bother anybody. It wouldn't get in anybody's business. It wouldn't. They wouldn't be searching people, and they would still have plenty of room to set up a security perimeter. It's not like. But why do they even yeah. set it up for a private group that's not important, according to our media? There you go. Yeah. They why do, why don't they the just army. have security at the hotel and at its front gate? It's about harassing right. everyone, just, so we can't even aim cameras at the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can't even get to the. So building. the media can say it doesn't exist. Exactly. So they can play and, the public like a bunch of idiots. We've gone to two, talk to two different police groups, the one downtown, who are very rude to us, and then the ones up here, who I guess just rifled through our stuff. Josh, what did they actually look through? They just looked, they opened up the trunk and everything, right? They opened up the trunk. They pulled up the lining of the car and looked underneath the lining of the car. So we're very dangerous at this point. This is the most... A uh, full body cavity search we've ever had to undergo. We have a place yeah. in the back for a tire, and they ripped up the lining under. Yeah. All right, I want to make sure guys. We have Paul Watson on the line with an update on what's happening and unfolding. Then we're going to give you some breaking news on Cobra and get a big article out on it. Uh, Bilderberg claimed it was private security. No, it's it's German secret police or Austrian secret police involved in mind control. Uh, this is mainstream news you, in, in a castle, uh, predating GI Joe uh, villain Cobra. So this is probably who Cobra is named after. Uh, we thought it was a joke. They were called Cobra. 
again, truth is stranger than fiction. Usually, it turns out stuff in in fiction is from reality. Uh, let's get Paul Watson's take, who's still in the UK in London. He'll be traveling um, in uh, tomorrow uh, into Austria. Watson, what do you make of this? Well, it's, I mean, the, the claim that it's illegal to film police in Austria, from what I've read, is complete BS. I mean, there have been some pretty high-profile cases involving asylum seekers and illegal aliens where it was legal to film police. So there's no law against it. There's something where they can claim copyright against their image later on, but there's no it's not an actual crime to film the police in Austria. So. They can only claim the copyright if you're selling something off their image, like, like branding it with them. Under news gathering... I looked it up, too, before you guys went. They they can say nothing. No, so, you know, there's going to be dozens more people filming them there in a couple of days anyway. And that's, you know, last year in Denmark, it was completely different, of course. And that hotel was almost in the city center. It was literally, you know, like a mile away from the city center. They The police met with us before. We could set up right outside the hotel, literally large, yards from the hotel as all the cars were driving in. Completely different. Um, the police again, arrested provocateurs that were harassing us. They were pretty nice. Yeah, the, the provocateurs were worse than the police. But in Switzerland, it was a similar, similar geography. You know, the hotel was halfway up a mountain. But still, we could literally stand 100 yards away from the hotel and look directly at it. There was a huge staging area there. So the fact that they've we got... We could show the black like, helicopters yeah. landing and taking off, everything. Yeah. In fact, roll some of the black helicopters, guys. Go ahead. So the fact that they've they've set up these che checkpoints six miles away is bizarre because, you know, maybe it's due to the fact that they weren't happy with us last year because literally they were sat out on the patio having lunch in Copenhagen and there was just a, a like a chain-link fence separating... What about when they open the windows up and like eight guys are basically fondling each other in bathrobes? <laughs> Yeah, they were doing that in the in the hotel window. It was all very public. And even though we were literally, you know, less than a stone's throw away from Bilderberg members, there were about four cops in the whole area. So in comparison to this, where they've got, you know, 2,000 police surrounding this compound, it's completely ridiculous because there are only Oh, my God, be I just thought of something. Google the leader of... Cobra Security, Austria. That's Cobra Commander. <laughs> I bet he's even wearing a mask. I'm sorry, Paul. Go ahead. Well, it, it, it's just total overkill. Cobra was created as a reaction to the terrorist attack on the Munich Olympics. So they're treating, you know, a few Which, by dozen... the way, was staged by the Germans even at the end of the uh, one day in September or whatever the name it. It won an Academy Award. It's got uh, Michael Douglas narrates it. At the end, they admit that they actually staged the hijacking of the plane to release the terrorist because they'd actually worked for the government the whole time. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so it's it's complete overkill. I mean, there weren't even that many protesters in Copenhagen. It was in the middle of the city. So there's probably going to be, what, a few dozen bloggers and, quote, protesters who can't even get anywhere near the place when it kicks off. So a complete overkill. 5.6 million euros, including the G7, for this joint operation, taxpayer-funded. That can't be justified. Completely ridiculous. But again, Bilderberg claims that it's a charity. And in fact, the UK gave it charity status, <laughs> even though it's a bunch of private individuals. Let me ask you this, Paul, and we're going to go to break, come back with everybody here, Joe Biggs, yourself, Paul Watson, and, and the crew there on the ground. I want to ask you what you're going to be trying to focus on when you get there, what you expect to happen. And I also want to ask you, why do you think England had 3,000 plus people at once demonstrating against it, but the U.S. or anywhere else you can't get that? I mean, that says something about the U.K. folks, that they're more awake, I think. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's it, that's it. Yeah, I mean, you get, what, a, a few hundred when it's in Chantilly, but nowhere near like it was in Watford. I want to Obviously, ask you that question when we come back. Stay there. We're we'll talk the about march. Cobra Commander. The we'll Empire's the name of the on the run. Cobra. We've got Rammstein from Deutschland bringing us in today because we're now in Austria, the imperial capital of uh, what was connected to Germany and where our little baby Hitler came from. And we've got our reporters there uh, who have had the police put their hands on their guns, act very hateful, bug their eyes out at them, come to their hotel, now they're not acting as rude 
because we're going and getting in their faces. And we're not being mean. We're just, hey, we're here. We're just journalists. Are you a free country? We come in peace. In fact, do from now on just say, we come in peace from America. And, and uh, seriously, <laughs> uh, you know, we come in peace. And we're just here to cover the criminal group meeting uh, that wants to destroy our sovereignty. This is just self-defense. Uh, you can look up who we are. They, we're not criminals. We work with Alex Jones, InfoWars. They already have all that. They already know. I mean, walk in. You are Abdul? Out. No filming. Uh, but Joe Biggs wants to get into some of the military angle before I go back to Paul and you guys uh, dealing with this Cobra group who the media earlier said, oh, private security. They're not private. It's the, it's the Ministry of the Interior, and it, it's made out of the anti-terror unit from the Munich Games back in the 70s. Uh, in 1978, well, if you watch one day of September that won an Academy Award, they admit at the end of the movie that it was a false flag and that they staged a hijacking to release the supposed bombers. I, I mean, just every, this is the group that ran false flag of the attack on the Munich Olympics. There is no end to this. They're, they're certainly connected. Then you pull up a mainstream newspaper article, you folks the headline of Joe Biggs, that says it's connected to mind control in a castle that in the countryside outside Vienna at their command base. Yeah, this is from January 30th of 1972. Schonau Castle is a mystery to uh, Viennese. Like I said, it is this giant six-room castle on a 70-acre uh, wooded park with 15-foot uh, high walls. And that uh, people said that this was a center for spies and brainwashing. And that's the Boca Raton News. So so this thing is news in Florida. Yeah. And then you've got the Cobra commander group. <laughs> that are, We're still trying to find out who the commander of it is. The leader I, of the Ministry of the Interior is a woman. Maybe that's why he wears a mask. She's on screen. Th there's Cobra commander. Actually, she's actually not the commander of the units, but she's the overall commander. That's why Cobra commander usually wears a mask. Because she knows that people don't really want to follow a woman in combat. That's why he speaks in that voice like that, because it's really a woman. <laughs> there you go. There's Cobra Commander. Sorry. So, yeah, these guys are much like our FBI. And what, is our, what has our FBI done before? Staged events, plant evidence to uh, arrest people. And that's one of my biggest fears for some of these guys, you know, uh, the reporters over there right now. When they leave their hotel rooms, I would encourage you guys, when you go back every time, to search that place to make sure nothing's being planted because of the reason they're being so hostile towards you and stopping you nonstop and, you know, and, and just being rude, I would make sure that you would be checking those rooms every time you go back so they don't plan something so they can come in and all of a sudden say, oh, we need to come in and perform a search, and then they've got something there that they can kind of get you with. I think that's a great point. We're going back to Paul Watson in a moment. Um, but let's uh, get a comment from Rob Dew and Josh Owens. Well, I'm uh, actually checking every orifice in the kitchen right now to make sure there's nothing hidden. Um, because, yeah, I am taking that advice to heart. You need to and check I Henry Kissinger's maybe, um, orifice for the Constitution. <laughs> and maybe where it's hidden. I, th I think when when they come up upon me next time, I'll try this. Oh, wait, put your weapon. I mean, you no harm. I think I'll try <laughs> I found that. a bunch of Yoda. <laughs> oh, Yoda I love speak it. On them. <laughs> you can put your hands and up. Maybe, they'll... maybe, they'll, maybe that'll like lighten the mood because these guys are so serious. Like, I'm wearing a blazer. You know, I'm wearing a blazer. I have a ball cap on. I'm wearing glasses. You know, I'm not. I'm not carrying any weapons. You know, I have. I have a camera. I have several cameras, and that that's it. That's all we're armed with is the truth, and that's all we can do. And it's just amazing. You know, having that, that little confrontation with the, the cop yesterday who was trying to justify what they were doing and, and saying, we do this for you if you have a party and there's a break-in. No, you don't set up a five-mile checkpoint in front of my party and have 2,000 cops running around my property if I'm having a party. For an you organization the New York okay? Times and, and Rush Limbaugh says doesn't exist. That sounds like a McKinney pool party. Exactly. Can I hear from right. Yoda one more time about, because I interrupted Yoda earlier. Away, put your weapon. I mean, you no harm. Mm. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here at all. <laughs> yeah, but, oh. Hello, Mr. Penguin. Hello, Mr. Penguin. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, the thing is, they're working for the terrorist, 
Everyone knows it. They have to act like we're bad. And well, it's why, amazing. How that's they, why they SWAT team Amish people in two-year investigations over them selling a neighbor cheese because it's not illegal. But they have to show the jury, look, we SWAT teamed them. Like it's it's all theater. Sorry, go ahead. Well, it's amazing how they say they're going to be a private security group. Meanwhile, right here, it says Austrian Austrian Federal Police. And what magazine is that out of? Um, this was from a a, a magazine. Let me see. Uh, this one, it's called Cobra Austria Special Police Commandos uh, Law and Order. So it's a law enforcement magazine. Here, yeah, here. Lawandordermag.com. Let's look at it. And they don't even have real photos of themselves. It's like artist renderings of them doing heroic deeds. And again, folks, it's yeah, not just one. us covering Bilderberg. Uh, this is how the media operates. It's how the police operate. These are microcosms of the larger world. Sorry, go ahead, Yoda. I was just saying they they pride themselves on their mountaineering skills. The Cobra guys they they always compete in these mountaineering competitions and they always place in the top two or three. I you know these are the elite of the elite of you know of these special forces, and it just makes me wonder why they need to be here for you know like you said an event that doesn't exist. And I was if looking at, at least twenty four of them here. Yeah, I was looking at the map too, and there's a, a an area where it forks and goes to a single road that goes up into the uh, hotel. They could easily just block off that one area, that entrance, and then allow traffic to move freely throughout that area. Meanwhile, you're six miles back in a complete and total police state going through God knows how many checkpoints today. I mean, how many checkpoints have you had to go through today? This will only draw more attention on it. I mean, uh, that's what's going to happen go here. Two. Right. And and everybody I talk well, not everybody I talk to, uh, probably four out of the five people that I talked to down there um, in the town, we talked about 20 people, but probably four or five of them said, yeah, they had to go through checkpoints, and they thought it was weird. One guy's like, yeah, we had to go through them three times. We're just going up to the lake to hang out, and we got to go through a checkpoint every time. They're, they're being citizens. They just have to flash an ID and go through, but they still have to wait if they're pulling somebody else over. We saw a group of journalists. I, I assume they were journalists. One of them looked like he was one of those camera guys who carries the giant camera on his shoulder, one of those ENG cameras. And they looked like they were from Europe. They were all in this really small car. They had them pulled off to the side as we were coming down. I took a couple photos of them. Mm. And uh, they turned those guys away. Mm. Not like them, they did. No. <laughs> <laughs> Make them leave. Quit <laughs> uh, looking at me, Swan. <laughs> not, pro not proper credentials you carry. Mm? <laughs> <laughs> so, mine, mine, mine. Here. They turned. Or I will help you not do that one. Mine, mine. <laughs> mine, or I will hope you're not. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, <laughs> so they turned this, this group away, and they just looked like normal dudes. They had shorts and, and polo shirts on. It looked like they were just coming up here to cover the event, and they didn't have the proper paperwork, I guess, to get through. So that's what's going on here in, in Austria, and, and we're giving people the real news. I've seen reports that, that we're sensationalists, uh, that we come and cover this. But you know what? If you're going to agree and think that this is reasonable to have checkpoints five, six miles away from an event, I mean, did you're With guys, but this. listen, this is how they spin stuff. First, they said it didn't exist. Now they're setting up planetary government openly. We're going under TPP. The EU's a dictatorship, a Nazi project on record. Uh, it was covert. The UK is trying to get out right now. The globalists are setting up a global meltdown. The elite are moving. Yeah, the, the, the government security people run a mind control torture castle, according to the Boca Raton Times. I mean, you cannot make this stuff up, and then the media spins it that we're sensational. No, reality is sensational. Exactly. And, and guess what? We're winning. Guess what? We're winning. We're having a good time doing it. And you got a bunch of people want to power grab and take over, and that's why Germany and Austria were involved, staging the Munich attack. It's, it's come out. And so decades later, they can run around and harass journalists. Just like the Patriot Act's used on its number one enemy, veterans, like Joe Biggs, who's on a don't treat list at the VA. We know what's going on. I want to get Paul Watson's take on all this. Paul, um, a, a secret government group called Cobra that's in a mind control castle running security at Bilderberg that acts like Spectre. I mean, you really can't make this up. Well, the thing about it is... No, they try and make you feel guilty, like you're bad for wanting to cover this as a reporter or film the police or whatever, when they're literally guarding a conference run by a war criminal in Henry Kissinger, attended by three of the top people from HSBC, 
who recently got fined again for a second time $43 million for laundering money for drug dealers and arms dealers. And yet we're the bad people for wanting to cover this, and yet that's what's taking place at Bilderberg. And what they're discussing at Bilderberg is more capital controls, the move towards the abolition of cash in the name of, you know, preventing tax fraud and terror financing to ISIS. That's right. Let's talk about people. some of their agenda that you're what they admit is in yeah. their agenda that Drudge linked to yesterday. Let's go over what they admit is in their agenda and then what our sources say is also there because they're trying to sew the planet up right now. A, B, they've got to be mad because it's already all over the European and British press. It is not in the U.S. press as usual. Go ahead. Well, what they admit is in the agenda is basically meaningless because it's just a series of vague talking points like, you know, United Kingdom means absolutely nothing. So what they're actually talking about from what they've said and what, from the information we've got is, and this is why Regina Duggan from Google is there, this is why the guy from Google DeepMind is there, selling artificial intelligence and Big Brother surveillance as trendy and cool. That's what they've been working on for the past couple of years with this ingestible ID chip, which Regina Duggan, who of course is the former director of DARPA, now a Google executive, that's what she's working towards. She's in attendance at Bilderberg for the first time mm, with Google's Eric Schmidt. Sorry, Yoda was yeah. popping in. So this, is, this is real dark side stuff. Yeah, so they're basically going to come out and say, in the name of stopping ISIS, which now the Pentagon's leaked report said they knew they were creating a Salafist principality in the region by arming all these jihadist groups. But never mind that. In the, in the name of stopping ISIS, they're going to impose more capital controls on individuals. So France from September is already banning cash transactions over 1,000 euros. That's what Bilderberg's going to talk about because the very people there are allied with the institutions and the voices that are talking about abolishing cash altogether eventually. It's over the top. Yeah, and I, I just want to add one thing. There's another company. The head of Siemens Corp is going to be here, and they're one of the most corrupt companies in Europe. They've been fined over a billion dollars in corruption scandals. I mean, it's nothing sure. but corrupt individuals. Well, these are the very same mega banks. The these are the very same mega banks I showed last hour. Just fined five point eight million dollars for fixing the global uh, money uh, systems, the uh, currency speculation market every day. That is a fraction of what they make per day. Deutsche Bank hit with largest ever LIBOR fine a few years ago, uh, where all the big banks got caught fixing global interest rates. I mean, everything is rigged, ladies and gentlemen. Even the Rolling Stone magazine admits that. And all we're doing is showing you who's rigging it. The giant demonic possum, Henry Kissinger. The guy from Palantir is there, too, that large data mining company. That's tied in with the NSA. Yep. yep. And he's going to be at And that. they have three individuals from the, the Council or the Carnegie Endowment for International mm -hmm. Peace. And if people don't know that, this group was created. Carnegie quarterbacks the whole show. Exactly. They, their first act was to write a letter to Woodrow Wilson to say, hey, keep World War I going. We need this so we can change America fundamentally. And, and create a League of Nations. System. That's right. Exactly. And so they're, they're, they're going up there. The Carnegie the Endowment helped set up the Bolsheviks. The Carnegie Endowment yeah. helped put the uh, Bolsheviks in that caused the reign of terror that killed over 100 million people. I mean, these are evil their folks, job folks. Is to figure out how to whitewash World War III. How to turn it into something we need. That's why they have these... Wait a minute. Are you being discriminatory against World War Three now, Rob? I mean, I've heard a lot yeah, of extremism, exactly. but don't go that far. Yeah. Yeah. This guy's racist against World War Three. He's racist. He's, uh, World he's War III is going to affect Europe first. It's not going to affect the United States. I mean, unless it goes nuclear, and then everybody's dead. But, well, you know, they've got, they've got CEOs of, uh, of media corporations in Denmark, Italy, Austria, Germany, Turkey, the United States. The head of Bloomberg is going to be here. But some of the deeper the chief editor. and figure out how to whitewash it. Some of the deeper mine shafts, life could be quite easily continued. Animals would have to be bred <laughs> and slaughtered. Sorry, that's a Doctor Strange love. Can you it's guys pull up Doctor hey, Strange I'll love mine shaft? I, Just type Doctor Strange love mine shaft. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we're going to stay here the night at this place. I think I'm going to go down and get a, a hotel or a room at the other hotel. Um, just for tonight, I, I just don't feel, especially after coming here and then the guy 
the, the hotel manager said, don't be alarmed if they come at night. I'm definitely going to be alarmed if they come at night. Rob, 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 <laughs> Rob, Rob, Rob. You can do whatever you want as a family man, you know, with three kids and one in the one in the oven. You can do whatever you want. But I'm telling you, you want them to come. They're watching right now. If you know Dracula's coming at night, that's great. Be waiting on them and get it all on tape. Nighttime raid on journalists, sensational. So, 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 so tell us the rest of the story. You were told by the hotel owner, don't be surprised if they come at night. I mean, what are they going to do, drag yeah, you away to be, Auschwitz? He said, don't worry if they come at night. He said, don't be alarmed. Actually, he said, don't be alarmed if they come at night. Because he goes, they'll probably come back later. Because they asked him, you're going to be back. And I said, I, you know, I said, I don't know. We're down in the town. We're shooting some reports. And the last thing he said was, well, don't be alarmed if they come back tonight. <laughs> I'll see you in the morning. That was just a little creepy. Set up a GoPro outside and have that thing running. Yeah. Years? That's the problem. These batteries on everything. Hold on, hold on. We've got a comment I mean, here from the... About it People now. could actually stay down there for 100 years? It would not be difficult, my dear. <laughs> Nuclear reactors could... <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. President. Uh, by the way, I shouldn't make jokes. I, I do the show. This is really scary stuff. It's very saddening. I was very serious the first hour or two. I, I, I start making jokes at some point because we make light of this. And even the crew, my cousin was like, I think you're screwing around too much having fun. They don't normally give me advice. We cope with gallows humor. It's how we don't go crazy. I mean, it's better than turning stuff over, but we're going to have serious coverage of Bilderberg 2015 uh, throughout this week. Uh, it's truly disgusting. I'm going to do some overdrive and hit some other issues with this McKinney situation with the police and the pool party. Folks are out burning American flags now up there. It's 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 just really sad what's happened, this chain reaction uh, that the White House has basically set off using some real issues out there to fan the flames. But I wanted to get a closing comment from Paul Watson and then from Rob Dew and Josh Owens uh, there in Austria site of Bilderberg 2016, 2015, about to kick off. Uh, Paul Watson. Yeah, apparently they escorted Charlie Skelton of the Guardian back to his hotel in two police vans. They gave him a personal escort. He couldn't even get past the checkpoint. So, you know, that if they want to draw more attention to themselves, then keep doing it because it'll just make more headlines and shine further spotlight on Bilderberg. But we've got some of the agenda going up in a video in the next um half an hour or so, and then we'll get the rest of the text up after that. So that's going up on Infowars.com soon. This is from our high-level sources, folks. This is a big deal. And um, we should go to the hotel where Skelton is based. If you have that info, please give that to Rob Dew uh, so he can go interview uh, Skelton about his situation. That's a major London Guardian reporter, uh, and this is how they respond. Did he try to walk up there, or did they take his car? No, from what I understand, he drove up there in, in his own car and then they just turned him back, then gave him a personal escort with two police fans full of cops behind him all the way back to his own hotel. So That's the London Guardian, undoubtedly the biggest English language paper in Europe, not just the UK. I mean, that's the paper they read that they print on newsstands all over Europe. So we're talking 400 million people have access to it, and that's how they act. I mean, that's like the New York Times. Yeah, he posted a picture right before that happened, too, on his Twitter, showing the uh, checkpoint as he approached and then saying, hey, I'm being escorted out now by police. Let's show his Twitter if we can. This is simply, I keep using the word amazing, Paul. What do you make of this? It's, it's stupid. That's what it is, because they're just giving us more content, more videos, and more headlines. Mm -hmm. If they don't want to draw attention to themselves, then... Be reasonable and don't harass journalists. It's pretty simple. Well, I mean, look at how the UK police acted. Yeah. No, there were no stories about police brutality out of that or harassment. There were none out of Copenhagen. Well, they didn't even arrest me when I did them. bust the blockade and got on the barge because they knew that it was a First Amendment. Free speech over there, but the cops were telling me probably they agree with me. Great job, Watson. Great job, everybody. Uh, everybody stay there. I'm going to come back to Paul and then the guys in Biggs. Some of the breaking news up on Infowars.com uh, is having added to it right now. Screenshots of these magazine articles and news articles going back even into the 70s about Cobra that's guarding, uh, we're not joking, uh, that's guarding the Bilderberg group from the press and acting like the press is evil. And the reason I started getting goofy last hour is you got a group called Cobra that's in a castle where they admittedly mind control and torture people and it's in major Florida newspapers, and then that's who's running security. 
it's just upside down world, as I said at the start of the broadcast. It's bizarre. Final comment on that, Paul Watson. Yeah, again, it's it's stupid because they're going to draw more attention to themselves than otherwise would have happened. So what, we're going to get more headlines and more news stories out of it. Um, one more thing on the agenda. They're talking about arming the Ukrainian militias, these openly neo-Nazi militants who, you know, string people up on crosses, burn them alive, hang people from the neck. So they're openly talking about arming them and possibly stoking a major confrontation between Russia and NATO before the end of the year. This is Bilderberg thing, agenda. This is Bilderberg agenda. Yeah, same thing with the South China Sea situation. They're, they're going to not basically give China any room for maneuver on that. So again, possible confrontation. People have talked about China-U.S. relations being the worst in 20, 30 years. So Here's the problem. Again, you can't maneuver the Chinese into a war like we do the Japanese because there's nuclear weapons now. And I'm not saying the Imperial Japanese didn't deserve some of it. They were pretty bad. Uh, but the Chinese have got nuclear weapons. Well, there's there's no Chinese representation at Bilderberg. There has been a, a smattering of it in recent years, but they've been completely frozen out now. So they're definitely, you know, trying to dismantle the BRICS' ability to have any influence or challenge just that. Like, just like Putin decision. was kicked out of G7 from G8, and now the Chinese called that totalitarian. Yeah, they said it was authoritarian rule. You've also got Jim Messina of the Messina Group, who ran Obama's 2012 re-election campaign. He's now advising Hillary, so his job will be to basically strangle any funding, any financing for the other potential um, presidential candidates that will run against Hillary. So that will be his role at Bilderberg 2015. Paul, you are such an on-target great reporter. It, you know, how long? We've been working together, what, 13, 14 years? Something like that, yeah. Or longer? Since 2002, I think. Aren't you glad I forced you to do video blogs, forced you to get on air with us? Remember? De definitely. It's all picking up now, and, you know, I'm looking forward to getting out there. Amidst and the, now look the at you. <laughs> Why, I'm there with a gun, you're there with a belt feeding me. <laughs> It's worked out pretty well so far. Of course, folks, I said I'd quit joking around. That's a Dr. Strangelove uh, joke, isn't it, Paul? That you've been doing for about a decade. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I call up, once you do a story, I go, even if it's like midnight, your time, I go, it's an emergency. Write the story, Paul. Come on. Come on, the red coats are coming. <laughs> <laughs> you get over there and feed me that belt, boy. <laughs> no, I mean, do you like working for General Jack T. Ripper? Just let's be honest. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, we're going to do 15 more minutes of overdrive. I'm going to let Paul go right here, but I'm going to come back with Biggs to have about five minutes and then uh, final comments from uh, our two reporters that are there, um, Rob Dew and, of course, Josh Owens. But one minute to break, Paul. Other other bombshells are going to drop on us. Um, it, it's all about rebranding authoritarianism. They know that these riots are coming, this civil unrest. You had the billionaire owner, owner of Cartier the other day saying that He's afraid that these uh, these artificially intelligent robots will replace people, will basically make them lose their jobs, that that's going to cause a mass uprising. So basically Bilderberg wants more class warfare and civil unrest, like George Soros said was coming back in 2012. Now he's funding Black Lives Matter and all these movements that are creating that. But smart um, billionaires, almost to a man or woman who made their money, are freaked out trying to stabilize things. So there are some good forces out there. Yeah, and, you know, sometimes they invite kind of mavericks from the outside, but then you've got all these Google people there. Elon Musk says that Google's basically creating an army of robots that's going to wipe out humanity, and now they invited another one from Google this year. So it, it seems pretty clear that Bilderberg is fully behind that um, artificial Well, you're going to be publishing agenda. the full uh, agenda, right, today or tomorrow? Video's going up today and then the full text tomorrow. All right, well done, Lord Watson. It's, it's turning out worse than we thought. Can you imagine how bad the police state's going to be when this thing actually kicks off Thursday and the private jets? Oh, yeah, go to the nearby airport. That's where they'll be landing. And then see how the cops act there whenever you're trying to follow the sedans or videotape it, which is what the press would do. I mean, when you've got the Kardashians having a marriage, there's 18 helicopters over it. Yeah. This is 150 world leaders. We're not idiots. We try to cover stuff that really is important, not all the distractions. We're going to get Joe Biggs' take on all this in a moment. Uh, but finishing up, Rob Dew and Josh Owens from there uh, in Austria, in the Alps, close to Bilderberg. They've already gone through two checkpoints to get to where they are. Uh, other observations 
I'd like to talk to Josh in a moment as well. And what are you going to do next, Rob Duke? Sure. Well, we have a couple of reports that we need to put together. Uh, we want to get those out that, before they don't become timely. Uh, but what's interesting, uh, I'm sitting out here out the back porch looking into the valley. There's two horses in front of me eating grass, just like oblivious to the fact that the world leaders are going to be here. And it's just amazing that all around this, there's cops walking in the woods. There's cops at the entrance to the dirt road to our hotel, which, incidentally, this, Charlie Skelton was supposed to stay at our hotel up here on the mountain. So I'm not sure where he's at now, but the, he was supposed to be up here. I was looking forward to finally meeting him in person because I remember talking to him when he finally, um, when he turned, when he was making a big joke about the whole Bilderberg group. Ha, ha, ha. I'm a comedian guy. And then he got arrested twice. Uh, at uh, I believe it was Greece where he was at. And, you know, it's just people don't realize how real it is because they read all this stuff in the newspapers that are like, oh, it's a fake group. It doesn't exist. Well, if it's so fake, why are there checkpoints everywhere? Why do I have a van of cops at the hotel that I'm at and then another van of cops at the entrance to the the hotel, to the road, and then there's two checkpoints going down to the to the village? Why so much security? For because as George that Carlin really said... My mind. Because George Carlin said the owners are in control. You ain't in it. It's a big club and you ain't in it. It's a big group. Yeah. That's a club they beat you over the head with. (laughs) I want to get George Carlin had it right. I want to get Josh Owen's take on this situation uh, in in closing. Good job, guys. Great job. Uh, Let's talk to Josh Owens here real quick. A fellow reporter with Rob Dubb just joined us. I have to hand him the phone. Hold on one second. Down to get your take. All right, tell me you're there. Okay, I'm here. Okay, Josh, give us your uh, take on what you've seen unfold so far. Well, uh, I think these are just a bunch of nice guys that are just trying to help us out, you know. They seem like good people. I, I don't think he was really trying to turn my phone off. I think he was just trying to help me save my battery. Okay, so, so uh, I know we were screwing around earlier, but we're not now. Are, are you telling me they grabbed at your telephone? Tell us what happened. Yeah, well, when we walked into the police station, the uh, one guy who came up, there was a female sitting down. You, you, you guys saw it uh, live. And there was a, another guy that walked up, and he said, what are you doing? And I said, filming. And he lunged for my camera. And then I pulled it back, and he just walked off. I think he knew that he knew there was nothing he could do. He well, there's your headline. Austrian police try to take reporter's camera. Yeah, he, he was, it was an intimidation tactic. Well, we've looked, and there's no law. Uh, Charlie Skelton was escorted back by two vehicles, even though he was supposedly staying at the same lodge as you. So I guess they've gotten to the point now of not letting people through. I guess you're lucky you even made it through. Austrian police lunge at First Amendment. Yeah. Well, when we had when we got stopped at the checkpoint, they made me open every zipper of every bag, and they even tore up the upholstery in the back where there's usually a tire under there. They opened it up. There's no tire there, and they ripped up the upholstery. They pulled up the upholstery to see. If, I'm not sure what they thought we were smuggling in, uh, but yeah, it's outrageous. It's, it's unbelievable. Well, it, it's a major governmental secret policy meeting that's totally illegal in the U.S. and other laws. Violates the Logan Act and so many others. It's racketeering. I mean, they talk about the soccer association meeting in secret and stuff. This, this is the real deal. And, and and the people that go from LIBOR with all the rigging of the banks, rigging of the interest rates, rigging of the currency rates, this is a criminal mafia. This is the mega mafia 2.0. All right. Well, Josh, anything else you'd like to add? I just I, I believe, you know, this is just the second day we've been here. And I hate to say it, but it seems like this stuff is just going to keep getting worse. You know, they freaked out at first when we weren't filming. They went crazy when we were filming. We got kicked out of the police station. This time, uh, the first time they just looked at our bag. This time that we had to open every single compartment in the bag. Then they ripped up the upholstery. It, there's no telling where it's going to go uh, day three, four, five, six, seven. It, it, it's going to be, uh, it's unbelievable. As the, Bilderberg hasn't even started. Uh, let me put it that way. Bilderberg hasn't even started, and it's already descended into this ridiculousness. Thank you so much, Josh Owens. Uh, be safe. We'll pray for you. DrudgeReport.com is breaking the electronic Berlin Wall, but Drudge has to link to foreign press. Drudge has to link to foreign press like the London Guardian, the Independent, and others to get English-speaking news. Forget G7 Summit. Bilderberg is where the big guns go. 
businesses, uh, bosses, lobby politicians on future of EU, and then Infowars.com. Abolition of cash, capital controls, and our story breaking that down by Paul Joseph Watson. Paul writes, the powerful Bilderberg Group will discuss imposing more capital controls on average citizens, while HSBC, whose group chairman will attend the conference, is set to pay more than $40 million for illegal money laundering involving arms dealers and helping the wealthy avoid taxes. Well, what does Hillary do? She gets money at her foundation when she headed up the State Department to let dictators get weapons. I mean, th these are the real criminals, folks. It's very much a case of do as I say, not as I do. And they want to get rid of cash. They admit in press releases show they can tax our money in bail-ins, like they're doing in Europe, taking our money, so we can't take it and put it in a mattress. They want us fully under their digital control. Very important article by Paul Joseph Watson, and I salute Matt Drudge for being the only big media, he is alternative media, but big media, to cover Bilderberg. Others are ridiculing us. I've got the clips. I'm not going to give them attention. Mainline conservatives are saying we're full of prunes. All right, Joe Biggs, you've got five minutes. You've got the floor till we end the transmission. Your overall view on this, your overall view on Cobra and where you see this going. Yeah, I definitely see this ramping up more and more. Like Josh said, the uh, security press is definitely going to stand up. And once these elites start coming in to play and these guys are convoying in, you can see a whole grid lockdown. And like I said, my concern is that these guys are really being extra careful because these guys, like I said, they kind of, you know, they, they kind of go after the ways that, like the FBI did. So like you said, the comparison, and we know how the FBI in America stages things as well. So I just hope that these guys are... Taking extra prior, or, uh, taking extra steps to make sure that they are checking behind themselves, checking their hotel, and just overall security of what's going on. Because I wouldn't put it past these guys to do something like that. Because, like you said, it's every day it's ramping up more and more. These guys are walking through the woods. You've got the guy who owns this uh, room where they're staying, saying that there's a good chance they could come back at nighttime. So I'm hoping that you know they can keep a good eye out, also get some rest, but. Uh, maintain some discipline and keep an eye on things. I almost sent you, but you've been so busy and, and, and you wanted to go, but I haven't sent Rob Dew uh, and, and, and Josh on something in a while. Um, I know there's some things breaking down up in McKinney uh, by Dallas, and, and you might be going up to that, but what would you be doing right now if you were in Austria? Well, definitely pulling back, looking at those maps, trying to see if I can find some alternate routes, uh, maybe circle around into some other cities and then try to come in. There was another back way. Maybe they don't have as much security there. I don't know, but definitely look at those alternate routes. And all you want to do is videotape the building. I mean, be a journalist. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to go out and hike and get through the woods and find out what's going on. I mean, I, I'd be kind of curious to see how they react if they approach you in the woods, if they were to take a hike and go up in one of those trails and see what would happen with that as well, you know? What do you think the strategy is putting checkpoints six miles away? It's to, for something like that, when you do ro roving checkpoints and you move them around, you do that whenever you think or you've been told by your higher up that there's a chance that there could be some kind of like outside attack. And like I said, that's what concerns me about how they're saying they're like the FBI. We know that the FBI staged things before, and this would be a way to lock everything down and then not allow anything in there whatsoever. And they could do their secret meeting and then go on about their way and detain journalists. Shifting gears, the Soros destabilization program is in full swing. What do you think of that video of the cops mainly grabbing black kids at a swimming pool in McKinney uh, up by Dallas? And then now, I mean, I think the cop is a little out of control. Uh, but then now the response of burning American flags and stuff, how, how is that now the default response? Because you get these same George Soros-funded people coming in, these, these pawns that are working for him. They show up to... There's this one guy, his name's DeRay something. He he shows up at every protest. He's got like 140,000 Twitter followers, and he's like the main like voice. He's like the celebrity Black Lives Matter guy. And he tweeted out last night, said, oh, my God, it, it was so nice to come to Texas and see so many familiar faces, people from Ferguson, Baltimore, Cleveland, D.C. It's the same people that go around to all these things. They take an incident, and then they blow it up, and then they're out there just trying to get a paycheck. You know, what's happened to McKinney? Yeah, the officer to pull a gun on a bunch of teenagers. At a, they're obviously in bathing suits at a pool party. That's pretty extreme. And they're just standing like 10 feet away. 
Yeah. So, but again, they're just training the cops to act like they're commandos in World War One or something. And they're just so ready to go. It's, it's just explosive. Well, I mean, you know, when I was a kid, I, I've had run-ins with police, and they would always approach you, ask you what was going on. And then, you know, as a last resort, ever reach for a gun. Now it's a reach for the gun first and then try to figure everything out later on in court. And it escalates everything. It, it's just crazy. And then the globalists that have engineered this mindset are going to play on that to make it even worse. That's it for extended coverage of Bilderberg. Tonight, more. And the latest breaking news at InfoWars.com. But tonight, 7 o'clock Central, InfoWars Nightly News. Help us spread the word.